Hello and welcome back, everybody. We're here for hashtag Just D and D Things. And we're back. We're missing West tonight, but we've still got Dairy. We've got Dotagor. We've got Binky Fiasco, and we've got Dopey, the Halfling? Question mark. Um, if you guys tuned in last week, you saw our heroes face down the zombie horde. And just to give you guys an inkling of what actually went down here, uh, as you can see on the screen here, there are just dozens and dozens of zombies in a very small area which almost did our heroes in including turned tilly into a zombie uh they spent the entire session last week fighting and clawing their way through the dead and decaying bodies of numerous undead finally disabling the barking boxes left behind by these grave robbers uh as they made their escape that being said, they reached the outskirts of the graveyard, the City of Dead, City of the Dead, I guess, uh, if you're familiar at all with the City of Waterdeep, uh, where they came, aco came across a few Order of the Gauntlet clerics that helped to kind of see to the day-to-day -day operations of the graveyard during the daytime as dawn was approaching. Uh, as they were leaving, they all had their curses lifted from them with a greater restoration spell. Luckily for them, Except, as Tilly tried to leave, out of the shadows of a gravestone, a small, legless corpse crawled his way slowly and yet quietly towards our total friend, and without making a sound, clawed at his big old cankles and laid a big old bite down on our total friend. Once again, succumbing to the curse, we have a zombie turtle. Thus tonight's title, Teenage Mutant Ninja Zombies. Uh, because Wes will not be here tonight, we will have one of our illustrious heroes roll off. And with that, I'll pass it on to you guys. Go ahead and roll a d20 to see who gets to control Tilly tonight. Ooh, doesn't look like Dottagor's going to do it. Ooh, Fine by me, dude. Doc Fine by got me. that I'm natty 20. I'm tired of being these, uh, you know... The fucking daddy See, daycare. The funny part about this is, is I went ahead and already opened his uh, character sheet. For this. <laughs> the ultimate flex. <laughs> nice. I already had it open, so. All, All right. right. Well, I guess I need to put this in. All right. If we swap page to page, just kind of let me know. Uh, so as we were, were uh, going back, you guys had a chance to kind of have some mini RPs. Doc, why don't you kind of recap yours a little bit? So I was, you know, walk, hanging back with Tilly, watched the zombie bite him, and went, oh, snap, lopped its head off, looked up, and went, mm, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> looked over at the clerics and like, we're out of the spells, dude. Come back tomorrow if he turns. I'm like, you got it, dude. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, you guys all needed greater restorations, and they're a fresh out of spell slots for the evening. I'll have you know I did not, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, reconfirm. Dottagor managed <laughs> to escape unscathed. Unscathed. Fully healed, too, I might add. Just because every time a one hit point zombie hit the floor, he was Nothing just like, like him, tap a tap a tap tap Oak. tap. Oh, I forgot to mention the mug of the stream is Gavin tonight. He's a mimic. It's good. Hey, Gavin. Yes. Hold on. Uh, okay. Thank you, Fiasco. Why don't you discuss your. Mini RP, real quick. Mike, uh, Mike, unmute. <laughs> you big silly. Buttons. Um. So there was this weird. We got back to the tavern, and there's this weird creature that I haven't really seen in my bed. And uh, I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm tired. This is fine. And kind of regarding it wearily, I just kind of crawl into bed around it and pass out yeah and for the rest of you to kind of narrate the scene he falls asleep soundly i might add and eugene kind of lifts his head and <sighs> and then just kind of falls back asleep kind of having this tiefling female curled around him that um, was on point. thank you <laughs> thank you uh and with that Dottagor, why don't you talk to me a little bit about what happened to your mini-RP? Well, your boy 
got his uh, silver sword now, which is big exciting. How'd you get it? Uh, our uh, friends, what is it, Avi and Embrick? Yep. Uh, made them for me, and then they also had some material left over. And since they're super cool dudes, uh, made me some uh, kunai knives and a bandolier. Oh, very nice. Okay. Big exciting. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, they found uh, enough leftover material to make you some kunai knives to suit your inner anime heroine self, you know, go straight Naruto with it. And, uh, yeah, it made you a nice belt to keep them all in, too. It matches your cape, by the way. I forgot to mention that. That's what that. I'm talking about. So it matches pimp, the pimp cake. Pimp, pimp to the second pimp power now. cake. Pimp cake. <laughs> I want one. Anyway, uh, last but not least, we've got legendary Derry the Paladin on the way home in the soft pitter-patter of rain of early dawn in the city of Waterdeep. Uh, a noise kind of catches your eye down the street or down an alley while you guys are all walking down a street. Um, the others kind of carry on, but you walk down the alley to kind of investigate, and you find a ramshackle stack of crates and pallets and burlap kind of laid out in a very crude sort of shelter. And just barely visible in the darkness pressed up against the back of her ramshackle shelter you kind of see the toes peeking out of a small child uh from there i ask her why do you sleep in such a place child and uh she kind of after she hears your voice kind of keying her in that you know that she's there uh, she kind of huddles further against the back of her sh shack, and uh, she doesn't really say anything. Do you crouch down to try and get a better look? Uh, what do I see? Uh, so if you crouch down, she's pressed up against the back of her, um, like I said, makeshift shelter. And she's not saying anything, but her eyes are wide with fear. Uh, I'll grab a ration from my pouch and hand it to her. Uh, so you hand it out, and she kind of sees it, and you see her expression kind of change suddenly from one of just apprehension and fear to one of, like, cravenness. She is so hungry that it defies all sense of fear that she has right now. And uh, go ahead and make an athletics check. Oh, oh. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> you have a pretty good grip on this ration, but it's still not quite good enough. She whoosh, snatches it straight out of your <laughs> gauntleted hand and starts hungrily munching on it. <laughs> and uh, it's basically like dried salted beef. And uh, she still makes pretty quick work of this tough, uh, hard to eat, almost hard tack like food. Um, do you need some place to sleep? Uh, go ahead and roll a persuasion check with advantage. Fourteen and a thirteen. <laughs> well, okay. Um, she, um... She kind of starts, <coughs> <coughs> but you know, less like a man, more like Hold a child. Water skin. Uh, she takes it and kind of gobbles it down quickly, uh, <laughs> choking a little bit still on some particle of food. But she's surprised by her <laughs> kindness. You know, um, she still hasn't said anything, but she kind of looks at you, looks up at you. Just like I'm gonna re uh, just lend out my hand. She takes your hand. How big is she? Is she kind of like... She's about the size of an 11-year-old girl. So now that she's kind of stepped out of her shack into the alley, you notice her ears are pointed, but not sharply. Blunted pointed. Mm, Half-elf, maybe? 
Maybe. Go ahead and roll an intelligence check. Oh, I don't have good intelligence. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you could roll like Tilly does and get that nat 20 minus 1 every freaking time. Tilly. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, that's enough to know that you, you have a sar- strong suspicion that she's not pure blood elf. That's for sure. Okay. Um, and as she comes out, you notice that the clothes that she's wearing are especially ragged, but that her back has been lashed and there are lots long strips kind of cut into the fabric of her back and they're kind of they're to be frank bloodstained mm. okay if that's the case i'm gonna expel a spell slot and use a uh, cure wounds to try and heal that go ahead just if I just want to eat And go ahead and roll another persuasion check too. So nine and then my man twenty for persuasion. My man. Okay. Um yeah, with that she at first kind of just jerks away from you. Um scared and frightened, but then your hand starts to glow with like this earthly golden light and you reach out and she kind of senses the complete lack of malice in your uh, approach and she she's in pain you notice now her eyes are welling up now that she's moving a bit more and as you kind of move her to put your gold golden light and case gauntlet onto her back, you notice that there are many scars in addition to the fresh wounds on her back. And, uh, you heal her, and as you watch, those new wounds knit shut, but there's a patchwork of thick scars on her back. Hmm. Okay. If that's the case, I'm gonna hand her another ration, and... Ask her if it's okay to pick her up. She kind of looks at you. She kind of stretches her back a bit, noticing that it's feeling a bit better. And she looks up at you and she just. She's got a really thick bottom lip, kind of just completely unaccustomed and taken aback by kindness in general, let alone from a human be- or from, a, from a, an intelligent being. And uh, she nods with a thick lower lip, yeah. So I'll hand her the rush and then uh, just kind of cradle her. Okay. Okay. So you're going to like fireman's carry? You're going to just cradle her like this? Okay, cool. Um, Then what? I'll take her into the tavern and uh, see if... What was her name that owns the tavern? Margaret or Gwen? Margaret. Gwen. Okay. Uh, See if she's... Even she knows who this is. Okay. Hey, you're a human female. Do you know this somewhat oh, human, human human? Female. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what a dragonborn would do. <laughs> uh, you, you know who this is, right? Also, she works there. <laughs> you technically own the tavern. Yeah, she doesn't own that place. Uh, uh, oh, um, didn't know that. But now I do. <laughs> she just works there. She, oh, she's man. upper management, but not like crazy upper management. True, I mean, true, I'm true, a, I'm true. A, I'm, a, I'm a dragonborn. I don't know much about humans or all these other beings. I don't know nothing about no business. Whoa. Uh, so for the rest of you guys, you guys are pretty battered and tired. You guys heading back same, to the tavern, right? Same. Yeah. Oh, your boy is going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, okay. Your boy's going to sleep too. Okay. Uh, it's morning. <laughs> you guys are all going to sleep. Hell okay. Yeah. So you guys all head back to the tavern. Derry, by the time you get there, she is fast asleep in your arms. You put her in Tilly's room. Uh, uh, mm, the zombie? <laughs> With the zombie? I I mean, I don't know that he's... Did, did somebody tell me he got bit again? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. Tilly, you sleep outside. <laughs> and uh, with that, Tilly just kind of goes, Tilly... And it just goes outside, and now there's just an undead zombie at the entrance to y'all's tavern. A giant, a giant turtle zombie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's probably, it's probably better if we put him in the basement. That's probably, well, we, what, with the other two kids? Oh, we'll send the kids upstairs <laughs> out of the basement. 
How about we just put him up in the garrets, like, or up in the in the tower? He could keep lift company. Yeah. Do we get any gold? I don't think he'd fit through the hatchway up into the garage. What would we have gotten gold from? <laughs> I don't know. One of y'all could have all he knows time. is that y'all are broke as hell. That's all he knows. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm going to ask Gwen if we have an extra room or spare room that we can put this half-elven child in. Gwen, no. Gwen walks over and she's like, where, where did you find her? She was huddled underneath some boxes in the alley. And you just... She just came with you. She was scared at first, but I healed her wounds. She was slashed on her back and bleeding. Gwen moves a stool kind of close to you because you tower over Gwen, obviously. And uh, she steps up and stands on top of the stool. And then she can lean down a little bit. And she just gives you a small kiss on the cheek, holds your cheek and says, You sweet, sweet lizard born man. I don't know what we'd do without you. And, um, oh my God, with you saying that, I don't know whether to be turned on or not. Dude. That tail's growing, let me tell you. <laughs> oh my God. This sweet moment took a turn, but okay. <laughs> do. Jesus. <laughs> Why? Why every time? Anyway, um, so oh she's like, I'll, I'll, I'll take her. I'll make sure that she has a place to sleep. No one's currently using our room. We'll take her upstairs. And she, uh, she puts her over her shoulder, and she hefts her up three floors to the garrets and uh, sets her down in the bed. And uh, the girl softly snoring all along the way. And uh, after a few minutes... Oh, really? <laughs> what? Kids on the cheek? He's, he's mad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what happened, boys? What happened to Kyle? You mean <laughs> Derek? <laughs> I, dude, I don't know. I came up with a word. If you guys remember, Derek died two weeks ago. Oh, that's right. At Miss Shore. <laughs> unfortunate. How unfortunate. Yeah. Oops. Yes, at least she has the earrings that he bought for her. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, after putting the the little girl to bed, uh, Margaret comes back downstairs. It's like, I don't, I don't have too much ready at the moment, but if you want, I can make you all some breakfast. What happened? All of you look terrible. And is Tilly a zombie? How'd that happen? Uh, he's he's heading in that direction. Yeah. Good lord. He's approaching being some type of zamboni. <laughs> I'm gonna she stifles a chuckle when uh, you say zamboni. <laughs> she doesn't know what it means. It's just funny to her. I was going to hand her two gold and tell her this isn't much, but uh, try and find the little girl some new clothes. She looks up at you, tears beginning to well in her eyes, and she says, You sweet, sweet boy. You keep your gold, sir. You guys pay me enough to look after this. Yeah. Yeah, we do. (laughs) (laughs) Dopey's big mad. So when uh, you say that, she kind of comes over and is like, Oh, Dopey. I I never heard. Did you um did you get my note and my, my package? <laughs> Dopey wants the package though. I, that <laughs> I think Dopey wants to give her a different package. Jesus Christ! It's still me! <laughs> I am this person! He wants that's to sling the, the candy. Whole I'm not role playing yeah, intercourse with you. <laughs> that changes nothing. This is when he finds out that Gwen's got her organocephalates. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, Dobie's immune to that because he's got it too. That could happen. You never know. Well, I'm immune to disease, it's, so. Uh... <laughs> it's plus five. We're going to syphilates. It's going to come Oh, damn. I've only, got... <laughs> oh, only got plus three. Well, shit. Well, yeah, I did. You better roll that good oh. con save. <laughs> I did. They were delicious. You're going to turn into Tilly. Um, I haven't had a chance to thank you for those. We've just been so busy. I do apologize. Well, um, um, did you like them? She kind of uh, blushes a bit when asking. They were delicious. I was honestly not expecting them. Well, I wasn't expecting you to honestly save me 
like you did the other day, so I feel like cookies were the, the very absolute least I could do, and if there's anything else that I could do to make it up to you and to thank you, you just let me know. And she, with that, kind of gives you a little kiss on the cheek, too. Well, it is mostly my responsibility why you're here. I did personally hire you, so... <laughs> Roll insight. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it a big deal. You saw that booty clapping down the street, and you're like, I gotta hire this lady. I did not. I was carrying <laughs> far too much to see that booty. That's a 20. Uh, so, for you, you notice that the kiss on the cheek is a bit... It lingers a bit longer than it did on Derry. Oh, my. You know, if you're saying that this is you, you're sure pushing it, bro. I'm. I, uh, hey, I'm here to help lonely men. Hey, hey Doc's trying to, <laughs> trying to dish out that big dick. I don't know if Dopey could be considered a man. Oh, he certainly. I certainly would have done this when you told me his character was ten years old. That's for sure. I'm glad we mm. got that out of the way. Anyway, so yeah, uh, she, uh, she does that. Dopey is almost as tall as her now. By the way. Oh, and she's like Dopey. Am I crazy? Or are you getting taller? I don't want you. To, I've always been this height. Really? Oh. Well, very well. I'm very surprised he didn't make me real deception on that. Um. <laughs> nah. Why? Why do I even ever make you roll deception? You just get natural twenties <laughs> on them every time, anyway. So it doesn't fucking matter. Um. Right. But she kind of remembers herself and she she's oh uh, of course sorry breakfast kaz are you awake over there and uh kaz kind of just so he lives on stage now okay yeah no that's that, that is he is yeah he lives there he furniture <laughs> that's where he lives he's got a little pillow that he sits he on when he's playing i haven't made him part of the map he can still move around if i want him to he's like wank <laughs> wank 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 Loot case. Yeah. <laughs> Where the money gets tossed, he just curls up in there. <laughs> yeah, he lives in the bowl. Where yeah. people throw change for his... For those that are just joining us for the first time, Kaz was a former PC, now made NPC, of uh, Mike, who is now Binky Fiasco here in the lower right-hand corner, which I need to put Binky Fiasco on this map. Where are you? Oh, you're at He's the upstairs bed. In his room. Oh, you already went to bed, he went didn't directly you? directly to his room. Man, yeah, I am also asleep. 50 okay, confirmed is a very tiring. Dopey, um, Derry, Kaz, Kaz is fast asleep still. hasn't woken up even though he slept through the night. Tilly is literally standing outside the closed tavern, just kind of swaying a little bit on his feet and just saying, "Tilly." And then, uh, do you guys <laughs> want some? Do you want uh, Gwen to make you guys some breakfast? No, I'm gonna go to sleep. But I'm gonna uh, sleep. where? Is there a chair outside the or inside the bedroom? In here? Over here, yeah. Yeah, you could probably prop yourself up on a barrel or something like that. If that's what you want to do. Only because I don't want the kid to wake up and then there's no one there that she knows and then me being like somewhere else. Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, she, yeah that's sure. what she wants. To wake up looking at a dragon. That's a sleep. <laughs> so... Also, the dragon that basically swept her off the streets, but that's that's a, a later the role. That's future that her. future it. DM's problem. But um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> Dopey, you staying awake for a little bit? You gonna have some breakfast? Dopey's gonna go grab Tilly and direct him to go stand out back. That way, he's not scaring people away. Oh, when you go out, there are several people on the streets that are kind of getting ready to, to shop. You know, Troll Skull Alley is a very commerce. Uh, focused part of Waterdeep, and many people are kind of setting up their fruit carts, just like, what the fuck's wrong with this turtle, and where did he come from? Because a lot of these people haven't even met your new, uh, I won't call them business partners, but adventuring partners, Binky Fiasco and Tilly the Turtle. So we don't necessarily, they haven't seen them around, they don't recognize them from the grand opening of Leafs, and uh, honestly, they're unsettled. So, nope, he's just gonna wave. Hey, don't worry about him. He's had a long night. I'll I'll take care of him. You're good. Go about your business. And uh, one of them kind of approaches you, and he's wearing like a long, fair, like woolen robe. It's kind of dirty. 
It's obviously not new, and it's obviously not expensive. And he's like, is this is this your friend? Uh, he's a recent acquaintance, yes. Well, you may want to take him to a cleric. I've been around the block a few times, and, well, something ain't right. Oh, uh, it's definitely on the to-do list. But he needs a good night's sleep first. No, mate, no. Honestly, I'm pretty sure your friend's a zombie. Uh, that does tend to happen when you get bit by zombies. Are we just gonna, like, leave him, like, locked up, like, at the end of Shaun of the Dead, where he's got him, like, on the leash? He's just playing PlayStation. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Just let it all blow over, gents, you know? It'll be fine. God, Avery, you are going absolutely insane in chat right now. I love you, buddy, but good lord. It's even a Krampus reference? What's wrong with you? Anyway, moving on, not to draw attention to you anymore. Um, okay, so you put Tilly out back, and Tilly's just kind of like, Tilly. And as you guys walk him past the bar into the kitchen, he sees, like, some of the dried herbs hanging from the, like, ceiling drying, being used to prepare meals and stuff. And he just grabs, like, a big old clove of garlic, and he's just like, Tilly, and just, just bites into it. And he's like, Tilly? And Tilly, no. Stop that. And smacks him. Okay. Uh, make an athletics check. Ah, what's my athletics? It's three. <laughs> Seven. Uh, so, you try to smack it out of his hand, but even his slow, just like, Tilly, and he just kind of takes it closer to his mouth, and he's just looking at you. He's like, he doesn't want to eat it, but he doesn't want you to take it from him either. And he's just like, Starts shuffling him down, out the door the way you're trying to lead him. Good. Tilly, Tilly stay. Stay. T Tilly? Tilly, Tilly, stay. Tilly. Good, good, Tilly. And he rubs his chest. Good, Tilly. Uh, Make a dexterity save. <sighs> I swear to God, if all of you get infected again... You're just gonna die. It's just gonna be Datagor's bar now. So you're rubbing his chest, and he's like, <laughs> tries to snap with the snapping turtle speed and force. Um, kind of surprising for his current shambling zombie state. Uh, but you manage to just whip your hand out of the way before you can latch on. He's like, Tilly, bad Tilly, 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 mm. and he's Tilly. And uh, he can't, for those of you guys at home, he can't speak more than his name right now because he's a zombie. Also, he's not here, so it doesn't matter. But uh, he just kind of just, like, gives you this really, like, sad, angry look, and he just kind of slowly sinks into his shell. And, like, from inside, you kind of hear, like, an echoing, Tilly! And then he goes quiet. No, he's like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Oh, no breakfast. Okay, bye. Not, not, not. We're at sleep. <laughs> okay. Well, I might sneak in a little something for you for when you wake up. Uh, so, how long are you guys intending to sleep? Uh, I just want to get up in the morning and then resume yeah. my fucking search. So, you guys want to uh, sleep through this entire day and the yep. next night and wake up the next Fast morning. Forward. Correct. Everybody, roll initiative for me. Uh, oh God. Oh, okay. I guess, okay. Oh God! <laughs> Doc's leaving oh, in. Doc's uh, tired. finally waking up at a reasonable time. <laughs> Look at that! Derry's up early too. I'm on time. <clears throat> nah, Tilly's fine. Oh no, COP though. <laughs> All right, so up first and awake first the next morning pretty early it's let's say dawn time frame right the sun's peeking over the the battlements of the buildings around the tavern starting to shine through the windows uh you wake up to an empty room your back's a bit stiff but otherwise you had a very very excellent whole day of sleep 
Uh, you woke up a few times throughout the night. The first few times you checked on the little girl, she was fast asleep. This is the first time that you've woken up and she's not there anymore. Uh, I'm gonna get go go downstairs. Okay. And see if she's down there. Okay. Uh, so you get down there. Go ahead and move yourself down there. And uh, you hear sounds from inside the kitchen. It sounds like Gwen's kind of cooking. Um, <clears throat> Margaret's sitting at the bar with a steaming hot cup of coffee. And she's like, Oi, you want some? Uh, no, thank you. But have you seen a child around here? A half dozen one? Oh, yeah. I think she's in the basement. Oh, okay. You head to the basement. Uh, talk to Gwen and see if she if the child's down in the basement just to make sure oh hello Terry hi uh is the child downstairs oh, I think I think all the children are downstairs actually that's kind of the unofficial clubhouse when they're not mucking about in the kitchen here children uh, gonna, where's the way to, where's the stairway to the is this it it's right here that little door oh. in the floor kind of opens into this little thing right here. You go downstairs? Yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, when you get down there, um, she is in the basement with the boys, kind of hanging back. You get the... Go ahead and roll insight for me. I know good at anything. Oh, uh, that's good enough. You get the... You get the feeling that she's a bit nervous, and the boys are kind of playing with their sticks, you know? Just dueling back and forth in the ways of Dadagor and Dopey have taught them. They've got wooden swords. She doesn't have one, and there isn't another one for her to join in if, uh, you know, if they had one, you know? So she's kind of hanging back, kind of apprehensive, but there's no... no oh! What's, what's your name again? Derry. Oh, hello, Derry. What seems to be going on down here? Oh, we're just fighting. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to look to her and uh, is everything okay? She kind of gives you this look like, hey, you're making me look not cool. I want to be cool. <laughs> yeah, don't make me... Don't, just kind of like, hey, I'm I'm okay. Kind of look. She doesn't say anything. Well, I'm mysterious and broody, man. You're fucking this up for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, want to be accepted. You get the the feeling that she's okay, just <laughs> shy and nervous. Okay, uh, if that's the case, dude, you're so <laughs> lame. Come so on, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Here's a sword. No. Uh, uh, I, I do not give them a sharp weapon. Gwen will kill you with that yeah. sharp weapon. <laughs> uh, I'll go back upstairs. Okay. And just... Well, before I go upstairs, I'm going to ask her if she wants any food. Her eyes widen and she kind of nods very hurriedly. She's like, oh, is, is breakfast ready? One of the boys says. Almost. I'll go upstairs and ask. Okay. Go ahead and head back upstairs. Go upstairs and ask when. Oh, food ready? Um, well, it depends. Most of it is ready for us to have breakfast, if that's what you mean. But uh, I'm still working on, you know, all the brunch orders, all prepare preparations for opening the tavern, all that sort, all that sort of thing. Well, okay. Um, can you mind if I grab some food? Oh, sure. It's the pot there on the on the stove. It should be nice and warm. It's full of hearty porridge. Oh, thank you. I'm going to grab a bowl of porridge and uh, take it to one of the seats and tell the kids the porridge is ready. Okay. Uh, do you offer any to Margaret? <clears throat> oh, right. I forgot she's here. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ask her if she wants any. Uh, she just kind of grunts at you and she just goes, <clears throat> and lifts her coffee cup. Like, that's her breakfast. Just give her, like, the thumbs up. You give her the thumbs up? Uh, make... Make an insight check. With a wink. like just. Yeah, make uh, that insight check, dog. 13. <laughs> okay, no, 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 never mind. Um, 
So you set down a bowl of porridge for, I assume, the little girl. Mm -hmm. And do you get one for yourself? I'll go back and grab two for the kids and then one for myself. Oh, you're such a dear. And uh, um, Gwen hands you a couple more bowls for the kids and thanks you. God, if we start an orphanage. <laughs> uh, make an intelligence check, Dottagore, even though you're fucking asleep. Let me intelligence check my sleep. <laughs> His dreams are perfect. Am I asleep? Come on, cooperate, keyboard. Ten, and I rolled a five. Mm, very well. Okay, never mind. So, with that, uh, the boys Ooh. kind of slam open the little trap door that's in the floor above you guys and poop, pop out. Boop. And uh, this one struggles to get up. That's Luke. Lake here kind of clambers over the side of the, uh, the, the bar itself to sit at this stool. Uh, and when he sees that he's sitting over there, he swaps over and comes and sits next to his twin brother. And uh, both of them, like I said, struggled to get up onto the stools. But by the time they get up there, you guys present them with a steaming hot bowl of porridge. Oh. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh. Everybody left. Okay. Oh, there he is. Hello. Oh, we left. Uh -huh. we don't hey, Wes like is in the chat. Anymore. Oh, my God. It's Tilly. Miss you, buddy. We're doing horrible things to your character, by the way. But yeah, so the boys sit at the counter. They struggle to get up to it, and they start chowing down on their porridge. And uh, from the open trap door, the little girl just kind of peeks her head out. And just boop. Food? And uh, she kind of wanders over where you set her uh, Is that food just a down. a recolored, like, goblin skin? I can't. It's so small. I gotta zoom. Oh, no, it is a girl. It looked like the goblin that... <laughs> That's that sweet preparation. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, my God. PG-13, Mike. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Anyway. Uh, the actual definition <laughs> of that, by the way, is three or more people without shoes, so... <laughs> it's interesting that you know that offhand. PG-13 or what? What? Oh. There's a lot of really dumb stuff I know offhand. Hashtag intelligence 15. Approximate knowledge <laughs> of many things. <laughs> Fan the human. Anyway. Um, <laughs> moving on. She uh, gets into her stool and starts chowing down on this porridge. So, uh, Darry, you want to chat out on some porridge, too? Yeah. <sighs> Gwen, as you start to sit down to eat, she's like, and Derry, be a dear. Don't eat the bowl this time. And she just kind of <laughs> pops out and then Derry, pops back in. Savage. Can't have nice things, man. Well, she she appreciates you, but also appreciates bowls. So do your best. I, I think Gwen definitely appreciates a good bowl. <laughs> Is that what Gwen appreciates? That's what she appreciates about you. Laughs in cop slash wizard weed dealer. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, who was next? Y'all trying to buy some drugs? Ugh. Me. All right, yeah, Dada Gore, you're up, bud. What's up? You, uh, food go ahead and roll perception, first thing. Word. Sick. Uh, <laughs> you don't smell nothing. The, the tavern uh, the stench of death is you're, still in my nose more than anything I, I have an itchy nose more than anything your clothes are a bit dank like a bit damp from spending all night in a graveyard kind of splooshing zombies and hacking off body parts throwing fireballs where i not covered in blood and smell i like wouldn't that? say that like i'd press to digitate you to smell i i could make you Shit. smell worse you know with press to digitate but it's funny yeah. i couldn't say worse but i could say press, press to digitate whatever um so hey, it's not great silver if you press to digitate me <laughs> <laughs> You broke ass. Just go shake him awake. Make me smell good! <laughs> it's my personal axe body spray. just follows me around. 
Chris did say, man, I need to. Who needs baths when you've got cantrips? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you wander downstairs. You have a seat. Okay. Well, as you're sitting there, my seat there, is taken by children, Margaret, and the small child that you see through the window it. you're sitting next to. Eugene kind of wander up. And squeeze himself. Oop, that's not what I want. Ooh, he is right. He was Love whamping. Uh, he kind of squeezes himself underneath the open window. You know, the one that's kind of stuck. It's his favorite. And he kind of wanders over to the table you're sitting at. And sits down in front of you. And he just kind of uh, goes. I give him the kitty head bats. Ooh, do you do behind the ears? Absolutely, and under the chin. Because I'm a gentleman. You get the good purrs. That so good shit. Like that. And, uh... Okay, so you give the cat a good pet, and uh, Gwen's still busy in the kitchen. She doesn't actually know you're out there waiting on breakfast, so you might want to like shout and let her know, maybe, or tell Margaret. Somebody will get you something. I can wait. Fair enough. <laughs> um, she uh, saunters out, having grabbed some chocolate milk for the kiddos. She sets down one, two three and then four glasses of chalky milk one is right in front of drink? dairy is it is it nesquik um it's nesquik, you should definitely get an additional bonus action it's ovaltine so you know it's the good shit you know it's fortifying Ooh. so uh she sits down normal child size cups in front of the kids dairy you get a flagon you get a horn of chocolate milk presented to and you. I just widen. Just... Bell Howl is so cool. Dude. <laughs> and she sets it up in front of you. And uh, thank you, madam. She's like, oh, anything for you, Derry? Oh, Doctor Gore. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, fancy some porridge, or do you want to wait until the more hearty fare is available? I will happily wait. Fair enough. Okay, it should be ready in a little bit. I've got some quiches baking in the oven. You know me. You hear that? I'm getting a quitch. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And with that, you know, she heads back into the kitchen. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when they're drawing. And hands. <laughs> she heads mm-hmm. back into the kitchen and starts busying herself in there. Um, shift. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Mike, when what else do you guys do? Gonna uh, actually, I'm gonna take one of the extra sword belts from my room that I would have brought down had I thought about it, and see about affixing it so that I can keep my sword on me. Okay, uh, so you'll now have two long swords essentially. Uh, how are you gonna strap those on? Just out of curiosity. I am trying to decide. Guys. I'm trying to decide if I want to do that or if I want to do it one on each and do cross draw just because it's funsies. Okay, but, and then uh, what about the bandolier? Have, well, that was my question. I, uh, which type of bandolier is it? Like, is it a proper across the chest bandolier, or is it like cool? It's like a one one yeah, rung one backpack. Row. Yeah, it's like a sling backpack. Yeah, and actually, uh, examining it, it has little little like leather thongs that you could use to affix it to. If you're carrying your sword on your back, you can basically affix it to your scabbard hanger or whatever that's called. You know what I mean? Awesome. Then I'm so, gonna do that. okay. But I'm going to have to take off the pimp cape, which is very upsetting. It's true. It's true. It's hard to draw from the back, but maybe that's more meant for formal occasions anyway. You, you did spend a pretty penny on it, so uh, we'll see. Okay. I'm now plus zero to pimping skill, but mm. <laughs> a travesty. <laughs> All right, so that being said, we will say that uh, after about an hour, everybody's kind of finished their breakfast. The kiddos head back to the basement for more play. Um, one of the little boys actually kind of steps out to the backyard. He just kind of goes past Tilly, and he sees the shell, and he's just like, Boy, is that, is that that guy that squished the guy and saved my life? And from inside the shell, you guys can kind of hear through the open doorway. It's just like, Tilly. (laughs) 
And uh, he doesn't move, but... Uh, Don't worry, guys, I speak whale. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Luke here uh, manages to find, like, a half-broken board from either, like, a pallet or maybe, like, a lobster cage or something like that, and uh, takes it down in the basement and offers it to the young girl so that she can play pretend and play sword fight with them. And uh, that's what they're doing in the basement. We've got, like, the three musketeers down in the basement. <laughs> I mean, if Wiz does end up turning into an orphanage, we could train them as, like, little mini rogues and send them out to do, like, spying and shit. Just have, uh, <laughs> like your, your little there. birds? <laughs> My little birds. Nobody would suspect a kid, right? <laughs> I mean, maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't, I don't know. Yeah, okay, we're turning into the Dark Brotherhood real fast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> real quick. Yeah, chill, 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 chill. This is real chaotic neutral of you there, Doc. <laughs> I sense a disturbance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, um, Gwen saunters out and she brought two, two, uh, 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 quitches with her. Hell and yeah, bro. she kind of shoes Eugene away. He goes and sits on the, near the mantle of the fire. And, uh, wow. Nick, dude. and uh, she sets down two piping hot quiches in front of you and you kind of look at them and you can see flecks of cheese and some bacon and obviously eggs and a very very thick and hearty crust that just uh, smells so good why is it spicy i need water are you guys margaret I, now <laughs> I, I dig in <laughs> Thank okay, you. so you take your first bite and you are transported. Roll a concept. You find yourself in another universe completely nude, and all you experience is the flavor that you would experience on your tongue is playing across your entire skin. It's just enveloping you and transforming you. She that got it in your wizard weed, bro. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> she take that with your wizard weed, bro. Yeah. I, I can taste the soy sauce on my balls, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just how magically good Gwen's cooking is. You just that's experience awesome. it with your whole body. You need to take one of these to the uh, to the wizard weed. You guy. come back to yourself. Go ahead and um, roll a charisma check for me. Fails it and just immediately starts weeping. Hey. <laughs> you have just been moaning loudly this entire time. You've just. Been... And that was one bite. From one bite. And Gwen is just kind of like. Thank God I took off and my she just, cape. She backs up a step. A and then she's like, oh, well, I don't want. I don't want to burn the rest. And she kind of just whew, goes back to the kitchen. Sprints away. <laughs> and, uh, Derry, go ahead and roll a perception check. The, the funny part was, is no matter if I rolled a 20 or not, that's what I would have done anyway, IRL. <laughs> 12, that's good enough. You hear uh, Gwen kind of mutter under her breath as she walks past. She's like, the people I work for. And she just kind of goes into the kitchen. Um... Yeah, the Obvious, made, obviously perturbed. Meat over your food. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You also hear Diagor behind you shortly before it that. Just like a cow mooing in the uh, like, <laughs> like, like he had a real good stretch first thing in the morning three days after a workout. You oh, know what I'm talking one about? Of the good old leg shakes. Oh yeah, where your whole body's a twitching. Like that's what it sounds like. <laughs> you know, just like. It's real good food. Yes. Uh, do you want a quiche now, Derry? <laughs> Derry's like, I'll have what he's having. Oh, uh, no, I am fairly well. <laughs> All right. Okay, with that, uh, we'll say that I think Dopey was up next, right? No, oh, no. Last. Dopey's last. You got a nat one. And you're not. I got a one. He got a one. It's it, it's fine. That one we'll say. Uh, Binky Fiasco, you wake up. It's almost opening time. Not that you really know too much about the day to day operations of the tavern or anything, uh, but you kind of come awake. There's a single shaft of sunlight kind of coming into your room through the window. Dust particles are floating in it. Um, the house is relatively quiet, and it's peaceful. And it's a piece that's. 
not common, given your life, given how you arrived on this plane of existence. And it's nice. Uh, Unmute yourself! You fool! Uh, I just kind of lay in bed for a second, taking it all in, and I'm like, this is nice, and I kind of sit up and throw my hair back. Wait, are you taking in uh, the shaft of sunlight? Yes. Just wanted yes, to check, because that was the I only mean, thing in your room, apparently. That is canon now. I mean, I'm just laying here, like, in the peacefulness of, like, just kind of enjoying the fact that it's quiet, because, like... I'm not used to that. And the fiasco just lays there, confirmed. For those of us, <laughs> Jesus Christ. For those of us at home, what is Binky Fiasco used to? Uh, so sort of the way I was imagining this, right? Um, in her universe, there's like this huge war going on, and her and like the other sorcerers were sort of in this area trying to create like. Uh, experimenting with magic, trying to uh, create some kind of weapon, and experiment goes wrong, wild magic surge, and that's how she got here. Um, and she's just like, this is nice. This is this is calm. Okay, with that, give me a perception check. Oh boy. I'm rolling good today, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am in bed <laughs> I am scrolled up um, okay you don't really hear anything but this late in the, the day you start to smell something and when you catch a whiff you kind of feel your belly just kind of go grumble grumble and uh, you're hungry cool so uh, how, how loud was Datagor's moan not loud enough to wake Binky Fiasco with a four okay. initiative, unfortunately. Cool. That would be... Uh, roll to I see if I it played a part down. in your nightmares. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what's going on. Uh, cool. So I just kind of lay in bed for a second, kind of just enjoying the peace, and then I get up, kind of throw my hair back. Um... <clears throat> Press to digitate myself to smell not like I was in a uh, uh, graveyard all night and head downstairs. Roll uh, a wild magic check, please. What? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah you casted a spell, bud. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rookie mistake. Now the bars are on fire. All right. So now a <laughs> two or worse will cause a wild magic surge. All right. So you press to digitate yourself to smell not like a cemetery, but what do you smell like? Um, literally not a cemetery. That's I just it. Fireball. So he smells like a butcher shop now. Smell. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you smell like fresh like blood. Vanilla mm. and like My I don't know, like perfume. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> like a l real light <laughs> vanilla <laughs> and perfume. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Vanilla on his former plane of existence smells like fresh blood. I'm just kidding. Oh, cool. That's fine. This is fine. Everything is fine. It's it's canon. So um, does that mean if we cut him open, he'll smell like vanilla? To him. For science! <laughs> no one makes him bleed his own blood. I trap myself in a prison gem, and I voluntarily, like... Uh, roll on the magic surge table. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um... It's like... That's some, some natural one. Fireball, fireball, fireball. <laughs> you gotta roll a natural one to actually hit. Right now it's a two or less, so. Yeah. Um, cool. So I'm yeah, so you walk here. in and uh, Margaret's just kind of like, Girl, what, what, what do you smell like? She comes over and she's not even trying to hide it. She literally just comes over. She's like, Is that. Is that mm. vanilla? Yes. You got any more of that? Uh. Do you? I use the spell. I can. Oh yes. shit! Oh god, no! <laughs> you mm. a spell. Cast well, it again. 
Could you could you cast a spell on me? Sure, I cast prestidigitation on uh, Margaret to make her smell like how I smell. I she kind of goes. Uh, go ahead and roll a wild magic check. Watch him fail it. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Two or worse. Two or worse, gentlemen. Oh. He's hacking. <laughs> <laughs> he just said roll sixteen. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, cool. So now on a three or worse, you get a wild magic surge today. Uh, she's like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That, that, avoid combat. that smells really nice. Thank you. And she just kind of takes her pack a day smoking voice back upstairs to her room. <laughs> and she's up there doing the, doing the numbers. Speaking of which, um, it's been a bit. <laughs> Dadagor is still eating his quiche behind you and moaning loudly. Mm. Uh, I just kind of look at Derry and I'm like, is he okay? Never better. Okay. Uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so with that, before Dadagor wakes up, the the boys run over. They slam open the trap door, and they run to Gwendolyn and uh, Derry and Binky. Make perception checks for me. Oh no! <laughs> I'm inside a test. You are suddenly blinded. Now. <laughs> Is that a fifteen? Yes. Oh, so both boys are crying and sporting large red welts on their hand. <laughs> She's an assassin. And uh, with that, you kind of see her My new apprentice. panic wide eyes just kind of poke up from the bottom. And she just kind of like, Is everything okay? Um, and uh, she just kind of gives you both wooden swords and her wooden plank, just hands them up to you. Kind of grab them and just promote this okay? child. This child is now uh, rank two child. <laughs> she she just up. looks up at you, and just it's for the C2 record, she's now instead of a C1. she's got uh, she's gotten a bit cleaned up since the other night. I guess at some point while you were asleep, um, Gwendolyn arranged for her to get a, a nice little bath, and uh, what was dirty blonde is now actually quite platinum blonde. And she looks up at you with pale robin's egg blue eyes and she kind of just she's apologetic in her nod but she yeah she says yeah yeah she's she's okay she's okay okay i'm gonna go up to the boys and ask you if everything's all right and what happened <clears throat> so they both talk at the same time so much that you can't so oh she did it oh, yeah! and you can't really quite growl. make it out and then you go Hup! at the sound of your growl one i'm gonna point at one of them you you hold the talking oh. acorn. <laughs> she, she's, she's a witch. She's a witch, I tell you. What happened? She, well, me and Lake here, we've been getting lessons from Dr. Gold and Dopey on it's... how to be... And Gwen, she says, she, she I, hears this. I approach the bar and <laughs> lean over and say, I'm Yo, sorry, what? what did you say? As you, you're leaning over the bar, just kind of like, oh, no, I'm no, no. Day. I would block no. the entry. You wouldn't be able to see them. Come on. And Gwen, um, she says, you've been kidding what? What have you been kidding <laughs> And uh, they both kind of like, what? Nothing. Nothing. We, can, we, we ain't been getting Nothing. And when the Gwen's just like is leaning well, over that. the bar, being like, "Don't snitch on me, boy." <laughs> Make an intimidation check. Got a fucking rat. <laughs> gonna intimidate children. That's fantastic. I'm not gonna intimidate the children. I'm just gonna lean over and be like, "No, don't do it. Oh no, she scares um, me. Please." <laughs> My job is killing monsters, fiends, and demons, but don't do Not it. Getting killed by her. <laughs> um, she's, as soon as you, she narrows her eyes. Ain't been doing nothing. 
is a double negative. And the boys just kind of oh, go... Hit, or, hit him with the old English debate. They just uh, <laughs> swallow noticeably their Adam's oh. apple, just kaplunk, you know? Uh, and uh, How old are these children? <laughs> what size is their Adam's apple? It's, Jesus. It's cartoonishly it's large. It's five, five five years old. <laughs> it's the actual size of an apple. Oh, man. It's... I've, I actually had a kumquat for the first time ever. It was terrible, but uh, it's about the size of a kumquat, you know, right there on their throat. Okay. Damn. And, uh, yeah, so they clam up as soon as uh, she's, like, the double negative comment. And she's, they're just like, well, we can't get caught lying if we don't say another fucking word. So they don't Those say anything else from the dopey lessons. Yeah, Deny everything. They make counter accusations. Implicate others. <laughs> yeah. <In the> lie. <laughs> if they just do get, get caught, they just literally rat both you guys out. They're like, "Oh, it was dopey and Donegor." They told, but th- no, they're they're completely silent, looking up at Gwen. Uh, what do you guys either. do? Are you guys gonna inter- intervene at all? Because right now, Derry is actually over here. Um, kind of chatting with if the boys. Gary would move himself. Uh, I, I pretend to not know anything, as I'm sure Gwen is about to start to pay attention to me. So I'm gonna <laughs> lean over <laughs> and look at the girl and say, "Oh, where did you come from?" She uh, <laughs> make a make a persuasion check. Oh boy, I'm normally so good at these. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Oh, I saw that three from Mike for a second there. I was like, oh! Uh, so, with that, even with the 17, the trap door to the basement goes shut and she's underneath it. I'm just going to go back and uh, knock on the basement. Did, you just hear, did I just hear Tilly outside? Tilly! <laughs> so, yeah, she's... she's Sitting right here underneath the trap door, you kind of open it up, and she just kind of. Oh, I'm just gonna reach out a hand. She's just like. Please, sir, I didn't mean to. <laughs> Ooh, can I arcana okay. check her to see if she is somewhat magical? Uh, you can do whatever you want, pal. Within reason. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not a fucking animal. <laughs> He's not the <laughs> eagles from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> is she magical in nature? Uh, no. It's okay. Cool. It's okay. You can come up. She we tentatively puts off. her hand in yours and comes back out of the basement. Um, she is noticeably disturbed by the numerous strange faces <laughs> and this weird thing outside that keeps saying, Tilly! So and nice. also, she's just weirded out because someone was moaning overtly sexually, and she could hear it through the basement floor. It's mating season, okay? <laughs> Hu- human mating season? All right. I'm in heat. <laughs> Stay this away from Valentine's that Day. That's Blood Hunter mating season. Oh, oh God. The witches. <laughs> this thing that she made up. <laughs> All right, so uh, with that, she's out of the basement, still nervous, and uh, I look over at the boys. with that, you guys kind of hear the door knob jiggle right here. Tilly, Tilly, you guys kind of uh, see through the the glass pane window built into the door. <laughs> you just kind of see like just it's kind of funny because it comes in from the side, but it's just Tilly's head. Just sideways. <laughs> He's going Tilly? to... Tilly? Tilly? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a Tilly. snapping turtle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it looks like. It's just like... Hold on, I'll do it too, because that's fun. Hold on. It is fun. <laughs> Tilly? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I leave over and tell the boys that she's not a witch. I checked. Okay. And she so kind of hears you say this, and she obviously understands English, right? And she's just kind of like... Well, that's good, because I don't speak Elvish, so... Yeah. Okay. 
I do. Um, <clears throat> so Not that I it would matter if you were a witch, by the way, if we're cool with those. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> she just kind of gives you, like, a tentative, apprehensive nod. Okay, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <clears throat> you're breathtaking. <laughs> no, you're breathtaking. <laughs> no, you. Okay, uh, so, Derry, you've got this uh, very nervous, so far, very mute uh, 11 year old girl, kind of out of her hiding spot, is surrounded by strange people. She's apparently just beat the shit out of these two little boys Hell who yeah. are five. She's now my <laughs> I'm going to come daughter. over here and uh, hand the, little to- the, to- the wooden toys back over to the kids and ask them, Did you, this little girl beat you up? And they both kind of realize like the implication of what you're saying, and they're five, and five year old logic just kind of. No! Uh uh! Uh-uh. She, she did not. She she tricked us. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She she uh she used trickery. Trubbery. <laughs> <laughs> we are the knights who say ni. No longer are we the knights who say ni. We are now the knights who say eke eke kabang we bum. You're very welcome for all of that. The mumble. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't miss that. That's important. Perfect. That's like the Leroy Jenkins quote where everybody forgets it's mm, Jenkins. Everybody forgets the mmm, you know? Mm, Jenkins. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. You gotta get, get that shit right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Hashtag never get shit done. Anyway. We're walking. We're walking. <laughs> we sometimes do Sometimes. Uh, infrequently, I would say. I, I expand it now. Occasionally get yeah, stuff done. Occasionally to infrequently get I stuff also, done. Let me just say this. I got a lot done last night. So I mean, you got a lot done if you mean you didn't get hey. zombified or almost hey. zombified. Hey. Hey. I got attention. Okay. Proud of you for that. Proud I of you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I did I stuff was too. also present. You you were paying attention. <laughs> you you were you killed it. You were like using strategy, whereas everybody else is like, I'll just run through and take all these AAOs. It'll be fine. And then Tilly's a fucking zombie. Look at that. Look at that, everybody. That's what happens. Oh my god. He ran through too, tried to run through all of them, but gets hit by the first one. <laughs> he did. He got hit by a fucking <laughs> He can only get hit one. by a critical hit. Oh god, and he still got zombied. He's got a twenty AC for those of you guys at home, so he's tough to hit. But when literally well, how many times like it had to be at least a hundred attack rolls on Tilly oh, alone. Least. Uh, yeah. he's, he's, the broken clock's gonna be right at least twice a day. So, yeah. Anyway, Tilly's a zombie. Hashtag Teenage Mutant Ninja Some of zombie. us were bitten multiple times and he only got bit one. <laughs> Fade, failed the con save, failed everything, failed his death saves. It was yeah, great. The, the thick oh. turtle failed the con save. <laughs> <laughs> he's got 44 HP. You know that con's gotta be something good. <laughs> I have more HP than yeah, me. Yeah, him is plus five. You have more HP than me, too. Wow. <laughs> You've actually got a surprisingly small amount of HP for a paladin. Right now I'm looking at 25, but I feel like that's not up to date. 39. Okay, that's just not up to date then. But yeah, y'all are level five now. I have now. a lot more HP than you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay. I didn't upgrade my constitution. I just did a feat instead. Ooh, mm. nice. Nice. All right, so the boys are now denying everything as far as they've come up crying and uh counter accusations yeah she is trickery Delegate. what do you do Delegate. i'm just gonna laugh just chuckle a little bit <laughs> okay they just kind of look at you weird they're also intimidated by your sheer size so i'm gonna turn around and just pat her on the head <laughs> she just kind of warmly and yet begrudgingly accepts it and kind of shrugs in like, yeah, taught those two homies what's up. And uh, with that, just with a little <laughs> Tilly. Oh shit. Tilly. Hey Tilly, come here. Tilly. Where Tilly? Tilly. Hey Tilly. Tilly. How are you today? Hey Tilly. Tilly. I thought so. Tilly uh, slowly rubs his tummy and just goes. Tilly. Oh, I hand him one of the quiches. 
because I definitely didn't eat the second one by now. <laughs> Tilly, <laughs> Tilly picks it up, and it's in this like ceramic tray that you're not supposed to eat, and with a curse from Gwen as she sees it unfolding in front of her, you just hear sorry, like the sorry, shattering sorry. of ceramic, and he just. <laughs> And while you watch, he takes that first bite and he just goes, Mmm, Tilly! <laughs> oh, boy. Tilly, 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 Tilly. <laughs> so he's, okay. he's being transported Tilly. by the quiche as well. Tilly. And uh, the giant turtle. So when he lands in the other dimension naked, is he without his shell? No, he's just got everything. He's, oh, he's actually like naked right crap. now. So he's just, you know, <laughs> there. But uh, with that, Eugene kind of comes up and it's just like. <laughs> and like tries to uh, like pounce onto uh, Tilly here. But I don't think that she'll stay on bu- on top. Yeah, she goes on the bottom. But um, hold on. I know how to fix this. Cut. Oh, fuck. I just deleted Eugene. Oh, fuck. There it is. I got it back. <laughs> For those at home, cut doesn't work. There we go. Now that I go on time, just, just latches onto the head of Tilly, and Tilly's just kind of like, Oh, shit. Tilly. Tilly. I mean, I mean the cat's got to break his AC. Yeah. So. And it's not doing shit. Tilly just kind of goes, Ooh. And just his head sinks into the shell, and all that's left on top is like, Eugene like can't go in, in there. Yeah, it's just basically <laughs> Eugene piloting the Tilly suit. <laughs> Jesus. All right, Tilly, we need to put you somewhere. Till, Tilly? And uh, with that, he finishes chowing down on the quiche, um, moaning the whole way. And then, like, the last thing is just like a piece of ceramic bowl, and he just goes, ah, <laughs> and just chows down his turtle beak, making quick work. And, um,. Gwen, just you guys just kind of hear it's like. <sighs> I put a silver on the uh, counter. <laughs> Tilly picks it up and eats it. <laughs> I'm trying to guide Tilly away. <laughs> Piece of candy. Piece of candy. All right, so he picks up the first one and he eats it. All right, Tilly, follow me. I'm gonna take oh, Tilly and I'm gonna lock him in this room. <laughs> okay, how do you do it? All right, I just say you know, follow me, and then once we get in here. I'm going to say, I'm going to lock this door. And I'm going to be like, one second, Tilly, I'll be right back. And then I'm going to walk out this door, turn around, and lock it. <laughs> okay, so uh, as you kind of lead him towards the stairs We've that way, he uh, he just like crunches into the fucking uh, bar here and just leaves a big old dent out of the corner as you guys kind of go up. And uh, he kind of drags his shell on the walls. He's kind of causing just hella drywall damage here. And uh, he makes it up stairs to here, and he's just like knocking over chairs. The Tilly, god damn it! And uh, he he makes it through this door. He's doing more damage than Sarantis did. He almost <laughs> burned the place down at like three times. <laughs> makes, it, <laughs> makes it upstairs. He's still following you. You're up, both up there, yeah. and he's just like Tilly. And he stops to kind of examine this potted plant right here, and he just kind of be- bends down, and he just takes a big old bite out of it and it was like oh, no. like ooh, tilly snacks snacks and it looks like hide him in here and say look tilly more snacks oh okay and then uh, while he's distracted by the snacks boom locks okay so he's he sits down in front of the the plant he's here in- and uh you lock the door hope he doesn't eat the books and you just hear a loud munching sound <laughs> this is what happens when you don't make it to your session <laughs> You're a moron that eats furniture. <laughs> in fairness, this was Sarantis's and, and fucking. It's Tilly's room. Yeah, so. Tilly's room now, so. Yeah, also, can you imagine I, if you I left him in the bathroom? There are really nice books in this library, anyway. <laughs> we looked at it. Oh no, they're all just dirty, smutty romance novels. You remember? Oh, that's right. It's, the Argonian it's, it's, it's remastered. Mm-hmm. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's real good stuff over there. Okay. It's like the Skyrim fucking manual. So you guys aren't going to bring Tilly wherever you go next. You're just going to lock him in his bedroom. I'm just putting him there for right now. <laughs> you never know how utilitarian a fucking zombie turtle might end up being. He just wants to eat everything, you know? 
I mean, I did use him to kill zombies. <laughs> Tilly snacks. <laughs> uh, with that, Dopey, you wake up. Yeah, just hearing the crunches of fucking Tilly scraping on the drywall everywhere. <laughs> so he heads downstairs and is like, what in the heck is going on? Sees oh, I had to lock Tilly in here, dude. <laughs> sees the potted plant destroyed and follows the stairs down and sees all the damage. He's like, what the hell? Tilly. Ah, damn it. Ah, scroll. Ah, scroll. Yeah, what, what? Scroll faster, Timothy. Scroll what, faster. What, what happened? Uh, Tilly, Tilly happened. came into the bar, so I, I decided I'd just put him in his room, and then yeah. uh, we could figure that mess out. Partial zombified turtle. Uh, Dottergore, did you get shorter? No. Most okay. definitely not. Very well. You definitely got taller, though. What you... well, I've always been this height. That's not true. I recall seeing the top of your head many a time. A tiny little, Are you tiny sure that wasn't because he was dead on the ground? <laughs> Perhaps. Are you sure it wasn't because our... Because I was forcing you to move, uh, in the ass? <laughs> That's that, also I don't possible. think it was the stab in the ass that did you end. Gonna hear it just it was him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Removal. Yeah. <laughs> It was the weak pull-out game that hurt you. <laughs> kind of That's like, oh, many man. people. Like this. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, Dopey, you're awake. Do you want some breakfast? I would. I Go ahead and you to, make me a perception to. check for me real quick, Doc. Perception. 20. You heard the fuck out of all those moans. And you He's stayed in bed, floor. specifically avoiding whatever the situation was with the moaning. <laughs> Downstairs. He likes moaning. <laughs> it, it was inspirational. I it went with the dream. The earthly plane. I'm sorry. I can't control myself. <laughs> it went it, with whatever it's dream. Especially God, of course, is what got me over the edge. That's oh, of course. Hear. Of course it was. <laughs> That's why he's got that uh, morning tendy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, uh, Gwen and the boys and uh, this girl you've never seen before, Doc. Uh, the boys and the little girl, uh, she goes back down to the basement and the boys are like, well, she, she couldn't do it again. And she just, they both <laughs> go downstairs. Whoop. They're going to have no knuckles. And, uh, <laughs> they're downstairs. You guys kind of hear the faint clatter of, uh, wooden sticks against crate wood. And, um, yeah. So she's downstairs with the boys again. Eugene has calmed down and she's kind of found her way into the lap of Binky Fiasco. And just kind of curled up, nice and comfy. Hey, everybody look at Mike's dome. <laughs> there it oh, is. <laughs> it's just like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Light the beacon. Ganda calls for aid. <laughs> All of China knows Mike you out the front door. All of China, China knows <laughs> You missed. <laughs> they were ten feet in front of you, and you missed. <laughs> uh, so, thank you. You've got this strange thing in your lap once again that has taken some sort of odd shine to you. I'm just like, uh, uh it's got to be vanilla. Uh, it's a tiny what apex you? predator. <laughs> that is the most dangerous killing creature of its size. Dangerous killing creature. I'm just like, uh, but I, I don't even know what to do. I just like, what? Don't pet it. If you pet it and it starts vibrating, Very it will blow up. Very <laughs> soft pats on the head and small and light scratches here. Otherwise, it will be very upset with you. If it starts okay. vibrating, it will explode. Uh, I guess I do what uh, Dadagor is telling me, like very light pets and like scratches behind the ears. You guys hear a rap at the door, and uh, what sounds like uh, Felinor just like, "Yo, you dudes opened yet? Like, I'm getting a severe case of the munchies, y'all." Dopey yeah, yeah. goes up and unlocks the door, then heads back. Oh, dude, what's up, dude? What's <laughs> up? You, 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 you holding my up, dude? Homie? What's up, man? She comes over and she lays down like not, this. Guy. She holds up her hand, and you hold yours out, and she just lays down. You don't have to do anything. She just lays down this sick, like, combination of high fives and stuff. Like, 
you, you just kind of sit there and take it. And she's like, man, you're real good at that. <laughs> Thanks, dude. No problem. Yo, what's for breakfast, y'all? I don't know, but I am hungry. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Gwen's like, oh, oh, hey, oh, give me, you want quiche? We've got quiche this morning. Oh, man, I love your quiche. Your quiche is orgasmic, Gwen. And Gwen's like, oh, right away. Just don't be as loud as you were last time, please. She's like, I can't, I can't help it, yo. And she, like, gets the quiche ready. Same. She brings it out. and Same. Le- leaves it in front of... Uh, as Derek teleports to the wall. In front of her. Nobody, yeah. Does anybody else kind of wonder about that? What are you talking about? Nothing happened. Um, I was always there. She just was like, oh, man. Uh, what have you guys been up to? And she like spoons a f- f- like puts a spoonful of quiche into her mouth. She goes, oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, She's like, oh, dear. And Gwen just kind of sighs and goes back. It's like, I must. Uh, Gwen, uh, you need to make words, can I, can I your I'm, I'm starving. Oh, you want one too? Oh, right away. And you know what? You you can have an, you can have two. Oh, and she thank goes back you. And she comes back. She's like, for the growing boy. And she puts two down in front of you. <laughs> and uh, go ahead and uh, make an insight check, Doc. Eight. eight. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> you lack all <laughs> insight. Um, so you take the first bite of this quiche. Uh, what do you do? Charisma check. <laughs> do I gotta do a charisma check to make sure I don't moan out loud? Uh, yeah. Oh, no. I'll just make you moan out loud. I don't give a fuck. Turns out, even if you pass, moan. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I would have anyway. What do you want to do when you take a bite out of this quiche? Well, seeing as everybody else is moaning, yeah. I'm gonna be like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> okay, uh, she just kind of gives you this look, like this deep baritone voice comes out of you when you normally have a pretty tenor just voice. Like Earl Jones. Yeah, it's just like channeling. <laughs> oh man, oh, fuck. Yeah, you're just like. Oh, fuck. Just hard, hard bass, you know? And she just kind of just goes, oh. You can feel it in the walls. <laughs> yeah, she just kind of goes, oh. And she gives you a wink, and uh, she turns back, and she goes back to the kitchen. And at this point, um, now that you guys are kind of opened up, some more customers are coming in. Some of your brothers in the City Watch kind of pop in, and they're going to sit down at the table. They're going to eat some food, you know. They're going to hang out. All right, so we need to figure out where this key goes and what it opens and how to get inside. We should definitely, you know, inspect that key. Okay. I enhance upon the key. <laughs> and by that, I mean I put on my goggles of seeing. Okay. Uh, so when you look at this key, hold on one second. Because there was the rusty key and then the other key. I have both. We should definitely get out of here before this entire place turns into Moaning City. Yeah, it's going to get real awkward. It's, <laughs> it's going to get weird. God, it's like the hotels at Dragon Con. What the fuck is going on? Is that man dressed as a fox? Go ahead and make an investigation check. I'm going to go ahead and use my bonus action to help. I think he already gets um, advantage on it. Natural 20. Natural 20. So while you don't ha- recognize no. any of the marks on the key yourself, you have a pretty good idea of where you could take it to uh, figure out where this key came from. And that's to the... That guy. Hooray. That's the Metal House of Wonders! The Hooray. Guild Hall! The Guild Hall of the Splendid Order of Armorers, Locksmiths, and Finesmiths in the Dark Ward. Or, you know, any locksmith, because it's a fucking key. Doesn't matter. Cool. So, uh, that being said, you do know one of the representatives from that guild, from, you know, kind of getting started with the um, tavern, and you got the locks installed on the doors for the tavern, and Margaret's like, oh yeah, you gotta go, uh," she gives you guys directions to the place where that guy is, and uh, 
Does that guy have a name yet? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You don't know. Have you met him? <laughs> what are you, the fucking feds? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Boblin the Goblin! He's a locksmith! <laughs> Perfect. Let's go find the bobble. Let's go find the Uh So yeah, so you guys make your way towards the locksmith. Yep. Yeah. You gonna take Tilly with you? I think <laughs> Tilly's going to be the same. Now I'm not. Up. The All others, right. I, I, he is not my gimp. Real quick before we do this, let's take a 10-minute break since it's about halfway through the session. Everybody go use the bathroom. Everybody do your thing. Everybody that's watching from home, we're going to be probably back in about five minutes. That's about all it normally takes. So give me one second, and we will all be right back. Thank you all for hanging out. Make it like quick boops. That is not the BRB. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Thanks. We'll be right back. That's what the BRB means. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Okay, and we're back. At least I am. You guys back yet? I'm also back. Hello. I'm also back. I didn't leave. <sighs> you didn't go tinkle? I went tinkle. Good job. I'm proud Dang. of you. As it turns out, I don't have to go every 10 minutes because I'm not 95. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very well hydrated, and my bladder is roughly the size of a pimple. Got that tiny, tiny tanks that. over here. <laughs> nice. Okay. That was a spot-on reference to Parks and Rec. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I didn't do anything, but you're welcome. Neither of you did. That was my reference to Parks and Rec. I, I just like taking credit for things. That's what I like to do. There. Oh man, we went on break and everybody left us. We had like 10 viewers and now we have four. And I bet that that's all us. <laughs> one of them, one of them me. was me. One of them was me. <laughs> Come back, I need it for my algorithm. Please! <laughs> cast plus one to your stream. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> I know we've got some people that have been kind of watching me stream in the week, so that's pretty fun. Welcome, everybody. As you can see, they don't ever get anything done. And it's fine by me, because then I don't have to plan anything. You're welcome. Dude, if this breakfast didn't take three hours, I was ready to go. <laughs> Just really good breakfast. fucking breakfast, what can I say? I folded up my pimp cape. Can you all imagine if Derry had had a, qu a quiche? Oh, oh God. God. That poor little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Breath weapon accidentally goes <laughs> off. If he had rolled a critical one, maybe. Come back, I need it for my algorithm. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my sound was <laughs> like, That's me. <laughs> I was watching uh, this TikTok, and yeah, I forgot my sound was on. That's all good. Oops. <laughs> Banned. Hashtag canceled, Mike. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, man, we're climbing back. They're coming back. Hello, back, everybody. That came back. That's here. I came back. Hello. Outside the abrrr. <laughs> but, yeah. Tilly is, uh... I think I'm playing a pretty good zombie Tilly tonight. I don't know. Even though I'm supposed to be playing the zombie Tilly, but okay. You're in control of everything he does. I'm just in control of what he says. Which is Tilly. Over and over again. Tilly. Which is not largely dissimilar from when he wasn't a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wes, we love you. Uh, welcome back, Blue Raptor. You're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> just like hey welcome back and also fuck you uh, you show up. you're a yeah, zombie well, that's not yeah, his fault well, he's having a great you time you can uh that's not a zombie that's family you can <laughs> it right there yeah we locked him away mr man <laughs> and yeah he definitely does not know the word for egg so it's fine the only word he knows right now is tilly he's basically a ghost type Pokemon right now, if you think about it. True. Just you know, undead. You can turn into a ghost type if you uh, hit her with a rock. 
No way. <laughs> I haven't played Pokemon in a decade easily. So if that's true, I'm going to choose to believe you. And yeah, I and love it. Anything with a rock hard enough, it turns into a ghost type. <laughs> I'm surprised it took everybody this long to get that. No, I got it. I just wanted him to explain it. I didn't get it. No, he got me with that. You didn't get it? <laughs> he got me completely. That's why I laughed. I understood. <laughs> no, Wes, no. My algorithm, no. Please stay. <laughs> Tell your friends to follow this channel because... I don't know. I need How eight more. I get famous? Oh, God. No, that's probably the last thing I want. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to finish this last couple bites of cookie, and then we'll get going again. Yeah, then we can go talk to Boblin the Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> and, his, and his wife, Goblin, and his well, child, no, Wobblin. They, they are very basic white people. It's Lachlan the Locksmith. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my secret. Nick comes up with the sh shit, and I just go with it. Like that's yeah, that's where everything comes from. Lined up, dude. That's the best part about being a DM. Is DM, you just let them make the story. Oh yeah, I never want to utter the phrase "role play amongst yourselves" because that's the ultimate co cop out. I'm gonna set up situations and then just kind of watch, and just be like, <laughs> "Yes, role no, play, yes, you fools." <laughs> Oh man, I have a I whole other I'm cookie here, that. and it's oh, these are so good. If you guys have Wegmans near you, look at these cookies, man. Not sponsored, but hashtag wish I was. Just chocolate, completely dipped cookie. Oh, oh my god, it is. So I bought a mix. When I took my first bite of that, I was like, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> were you transported to another plane? I was completely naked. naked. I tasted it with my nutsack and everything. Mm. Oh. Soy sauce, guys. Soy sauce. <laughs> and the quich, I could taste it on my balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were like, you. It, the equivalent was feeling it all over at us. <laughs> oh, like, man. Like the guy that dipped his balls in soy sauce. <laughs> if you guys ever get the chance, the inspiration for today's breakfast came from a show on Netflix right now called Food Wars. If you haven't watched it, it is, it is an anime. But if you're not into that, it's still utterly ridiculous. And I highly recommend it. Anyway, yeah, so where were we? Oh, you were about to head to the locksmith. Uh, Fala right, Lefelure is having some breakfast, and uh, other people from around the alley have kind of stopped in to have uh, some breakfast. Excuse me. Mm. Sucks to suck, you nerd. All right, so you guys head to the locksmith? It might turn uh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Good. I'm going to go downstairs. At very least, Nick and I do. You gonna go downstairs with the kids? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just gonna make check up on the kids. Uh, so you peek your head down there, and there's nothing going the on. Too crazy. They're playing. Okay. They're playing. Them unconscious. One of them's wearing a crown and sitting on the top. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> They're all dead. Ah! <laughs> I killed them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all the bad guys. Take it. <laughs> Somebody just went down there and cast arms of Hadar. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Somebody's just like from the from the darkness. Shoo! <laughs> yeah, did wild magic with arms of Hadar. You sneeze and fucking. <laughs> just, uh, just, squat just say I'm gonna go look after the. Kid. I can't I wait for. There. <laughs> What'd you say, Derry? Look down and just be like, I'm gonna go look after the kids. Cast sleep. <laughs> okay. I don't think Gwen would be happy that you just knocked your kids out. Like for what reason though? That's like I don't even understand why. Totally fine. Just <laughs> make sure, make sure nothing goes on. Classic priest knocking kids out in basements. <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh man! Oh jeez! This is hey 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 hey. hey. This is There's light down there. Okay, Steve. it's not dark. He hey, in his defense, he's a paladin, not a cleric. <laughs> the the level of darkness that we have reached this evening. Is not an all new low, and that you all should be ashamed of. <laughs> You're right, I should try hard. <laughs> we anyway. need to break the barrier. So you're going to babysit? You're just going to creepily watch Luke and Lake, who you have no, no relationship with? No, I was going to go down there and uh, check up on the kids and just tell her that I was going to head out. Oh, okay. 
She just kind of. She knows that I'm moving. You go down, and the boys are like actively fencing her, and she, with her stick, is like lazily even fending off their attacks and parrying. And as you walk down the stairs, she just kind of goes like, like Princess Bride, just sends one of the swords flying, and then smacks aside the other one. And then uh, while you're standing there, you see her just go. And uh, the point of her stick just kind of levels itself at Lake's throat. And uh, as you sit there watching, she kicks up the one wooden sword that is clattered to the ground into her other hand and parries another blow and continues to parry blows (laughs) from the other twin. And you're not quite sure. It might just be because she's 11 and they're 5. but Is her last name Duerden? Um. She's not that. Is shape. it? I don't know. Maybe it will be. <laughs> Maybe her name's fucking Bobblin the Goblin. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. She's, not even a She's back. <laughs> it's another jump in disguise. <laughs> All right. So you Trick let her know that she, uh, that you're going. She gives you oh. a stern nod and, uh, take it easy on no, the No, this is a small it's child so that, uh, for those of you at home, the little red child, which I'll show you real quick. Arya Stark is a small child. Right here. It is an 11-year-old girl that Derry picked up off the street on the way home from the mausoleum. She didn't say yes. So far, she hasn't said anything at all. She's not spoken. Just going to look at her and tell her to take it easy on the kids. And she kind of smiles a little bit, and she just kind of goes... I can see what I can do. <laughs> Basically. If anything, if you need anything, I can do it, man. Go up to Gwen. Do you remember her? Okay. Okay. And I'll head on out. Okay, cool. Um, we go to the fucking locksmith now? Jesus Christ. Well, as you guys are walking like, out, Melanor Fellbranch ponders over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's just eating. He uh, is just sitting down to a steaming hot quiche, and you see him lift a fork to his mouth and just take a bite and go. Mm-hmm. Nope, don't want to hear that. Uh, should we get Dar- or uh, Tilly some help? No, he's fine. He's gonna be okay. Right. He's gonna he's be fine. Right. Um, just so you guys know, you guys are on your way out the door when. As you kind of saunter out and push your way out, this guy kind of wanders into the tavern. And, uh, yeah. He just comes in and he's sitting down at the table and, yeah. Do you look like our normal customer? Uh, make a perception check. Oh boy, I'm so good at these. At least I didn't do it. Tilly. Um, Dude. anyone else can make it if maybe Mike wants to stop texting. It was a sorry. 50, so we're clear. I'm sorry, I didn't do the plus one. Uh, this one, yeah, 20. <laughs> yeah, you both recognize both uh, Dotagor, Doc, and Binky. Binky, were you there? I can't remember. I think you what were. You there? What? Yeah, you, you recognize him. Recognize him as who? It's Paladin Steve. Oh wait, that's the dude with the sword. The um, oh the really cool the, sword. The axe. That, uh, yeah, it's it's an axe. The tux wanted. It's, it's the axe that talks shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's not. It's the he's not worthy guy. I'm not worthy. <laughs> yeah, so you guys remember he's Maloon War Dragon. That dude. What's up, Maloon? Oh. Hello, friends. I remember you from the other night. I thought I'd stop by and check out another tavern as opposed to uh, the Yarning Portal. It could get a bit edgy in there. Lots of meetings between sketchy-looking folks. You know how it is. Yeah, hoods and eye makeup uh, all around. So edgy. Quite, quite. Um, Well, I thought I'd try a bit of your fare. This, This is your establishment, if I recall. You told me that, right? Indeed it is. Ah, yes, well, um, I'd be more than happy to sample your wares. I, uh, do well, you have you a... definitely try the quiche, but uh, that being said, I've got some stuff i got to go take care of. Okay, um, with that, Gwen kind of saunters over, and uh, she's like, this is this morning's special set, here you go, and she puts a 
ceramic plate full of quiche on it. And Dottergore, you step out. The other three of you kind of stand there, and he uh, yep. he's like, "Oh well, thank you." Um, and uh, the rest of you guys leave. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, as you guys kind of step out, you guys hear him take his first bite, and you just hear. <laughs> and then you hear the clatter of his axe falling to the ground. I did the quiche just back. kill him? No, but as you guys walk back in the door, he's already stooping to pick his axe back up, and he's like, "Oh, clumsy me! Sorry. Sometimes it gets quite heavy, you know." And, uh, he affixes it back to his belt. I wonder why it gets quite heavy. Can somebody clue me in what's going on here? I think I missed this part. He's got a magic axe that does a bunch of cool shit. Yeah, it, okay, it, cool. Like, it becomes profound. I think, yeah, I think we were coin pursing you while you were on your phone call. Yeah, we were. We were. Okay, yeah. So oh, he's got, right. his axe is sentient and it's talking mad shit to him. We got sent to go uh, investigate him. <laughs> Till his <And>, axe. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we also briefly conspired. Actually, I, I loosened your leash so that you could listen in, and that's how we learned that it was talking. How was my cell phone? Good. you one of you guys has to mute. Probably Mike okay. if Doc, Doc wants to talk. <laughs> how, how was my stealth roll? Was it a good stealth roll? Did that I, was pretty solid. It was. It was pretty good. You he didn't yeah. know that you were peeping on him. Yeah. So yeah, you know that Asia Edge is a sentient axe, and that hit. it's similar to Thor's hammer as far as it can make itself real heavy, you know what I mean? It can make itself like real heavy. Heavy. And uh, he's basically arguing, having a battle of wills with his own axe about whether or not he should be possessed by something, something else for some reason. He's failing that battle. Um, yeah, so it doesn't... Blew off of his belt? Yeah, probably. Well, isn't that winning? Yeah, so just food for thought. And maybe if you guys have been there, you might have been able to pick it up and hand it to him, but now it's already back on his belt. Too bad. Okay. Uh, with that, you guys head to the locksmith, eh? Yes. All right, so we'll go to the narrative page where we just talk and use our imagination. Get out of the mind. Oh, great. I have Oh, God damn it. I'm a naked again. <clears throat> and then uh, you guys head over. Dopey looks. What? About. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Well, you said that I was transported before, and in my imagination, I was naked and tasting the food all over me. I said, and then you said we we're going to use our imaginations, and I was like, God damn it, I'm naked again. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Wes says, I love you guys, miss you guys, good night, just so you know. Oh, I see Dude, it's barely eight. What the fuck? Just leave it's your computer Saturday. on, bud, for the algorithms. Don't forget. Just leave it running, dog. Yeah, leave it on, buddy. <laughs> the fuck, Wes? It's Saturday. He's hanging out with his wife. Fuck you. It's for the boys. It's for the boys, dude. Nah, it's yeah, for dude. the boys. You know, the balls and the, you know, the boys. Oh, anyway. oh, are you talking about the, uh, the broad and beans? Yeah, the Frank and beans. Frank and beans. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, are just out in front, and you guys just hear, Tilly! Tilly, stay! Okay, uh, you guys head about 20 minutes through the streets of Waterdeep. It's a, it's a busy day, mid-10 day. Uh, the carts are bustling. There's lots of street vendors. Um, one of them is the same guy, Dopey, if you'll recall, that thought you were a child once before and gave you a free starfruit. Star fruit. Exactly. And he's got a full cart of starfruit. And you hey, remember... How, How amazing much for it was. a star fruit? Oh, well, it's only four, five copper, sir. Five copper it is. Here you go. Nice to meet you. I'm Boblin. I'm here all week. Hello, Boblin. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. Uh, he gives you a couple of star fruit um, for, let's How say, many? two copper. A couple means two. Okay. I had one to Dottagore. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. You guys take a bite? Oh, yeah. You're yeah. transported, and you both moat. No, I'm just yes, we're both naked again. <laughs> we're transported to the same space, and we see each other. We lock eyes. 
super romantic. Just <laughs> but you're both just life. watching each other nakedly enjoying and tasting with your entire skin. Anyway, um, <laughs> you guys reach the locksmith. <laughs> and uh, Damn, it's enchanted soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> the sign out front is uh, it looks almost like Lyft's sign. It's hardened steel. It's been kind of inked with oil and carbon almost, and it's just a giant padlock with a little keyhole in the middle. Oh, I'm hey. the keymaster, you the gatekeeper. You saying that <laughs> outside on the street around everybody? Yeah, just make a weird guy out. check. Let's just Well do. How how five. weird is this guy talking to himself in the street? About Definitely Ghostbusters. I recognize that. 18, I get a plus five, the weird guy. <laughs> oh, is that from that play, Ghostbusters? I saw yeah. that last week. Oh, what a fucking movie that was. Oh, Gatekeeper, Key Master. Oh, you're so funny, mister. Nailing it, dude. Ghostbusters is now canon. I like it. Yep. Fucking Bill Murray fucking killing it in Bill the Forgotten Realms. You know? Fucking legend. Like, he's like, it's like Driz Jordan, Bill Murray. Driz Jordan slightly above, just because you know, save so many people. Bill Murray right underneath, like fucking Medal of Honor. Close second. All right, so you guys walk in. Yep. Yes. Where were we going? Uh, so you guys walk in, and it's a sterile environment. There's not really anything for sale per se. You walk in, and there's a heavy oak wooden counter, a small like not even a cash register, but it just looks like a metal cash box. But behind the counter is like an array of keys. There's just all kinds of keys, including one key that happens to be behind happens to be behind like a glass box, and on the glass it just says "break in case of emergency," and it's just like this little key. Okay, so you're telling me that the Matrix key guy is now <laughs> the guy running this the lock locksmith? Oh, you mean Boblin? No. Yeah. <laughs> the guy we just bought Starfruit from. Uh, and then from the back, you guys hear a, a shrill female voice. Just <clears throat> you hear, oh, just a minute, just a minute, please. And uh, you hear some clanging and some some. And then you hear something spin up in the background, just like. And then you kind of hear this grinding noise, just like. And then something spins back down, <clears throat> and uh, uh, as you guys heard this noise, you kind of saw like light flashing past the doorway into the back of this store. And uh, sh- this, uh, what kind of witchcraft is that? Oh, just just a bit of machinering, machining, you know. We're we're a key shop. We do stuff. Um, <clears throat> and in walks a pleasantly plump, redheaded. But deeply tanned, very unusual combination. Um, female human. So, are you just uh, going to pick your jaws up off the floor, or are you going to buy something? I'm going I'm I'm to leave it. I'm going to leave it on the floor for a minute. Roll a charisma mm-hmm. check. My man. Well, I'll leave this to you. I'll go look for work. <laughs> Eat. Like, I'm not playing Sarandis. <clears throat> she uh, she looks at Dottagor and she's like, "Is your friend all right?" Yeah, he's just. Uh, wish you weren't so fucking awkward, but <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? In spare parts. Uh, I uh, found a key the other day, and I uh, I could actually make it go with <clears throat> spare parts. Oh, <clears throat> you need me to look at someone? Is it you okay? No, I yeah. uh, show her the badge. It's uh, part of an investigation. Oh, make a charisma check or a uh, persuasion check with advantage. Dopey whips out his uh, badge as well. I'm glad you said badge. Christ. Well, that... She, <laughs> that she, needs long gone, I, my friend. Can I see that, please? And she kind of takes your deputization. It's like, it says deputy. You don't look like City Watch. We That's were kind of deputized uh, after the events that happened in Troll Skull Alley so mm-hmm. that we could help with that particular investigation as normally they wouldn't let adventurers help. <clears> but <throat> seeing as how we were personally invested in what had happened 
in the alley, we uh, or in Troll School Alley, they extended us this courtesy so that we could help uh, keep our neighbors safe. Well, I don't know. Um, does anybody else say anything? I had paperwork to prove it. The badge is one thing, but, you know. I got my copy with me, too. Uh, Doc, go ahead and roll a persuasion check. After you show her the paperwork. 22. Oh, right. man. What do you say? Uh, this is it. All proper. We are deputized. If we could gain your <clears throat> assistance with this, it would be much appreciated. Oh, oh, Barnabas Blaswin. I think I've seen, I think I've heard of him before. Um, well, so you wanted me to take a look at a key? Yes, please. Um, okay. And, uh, she holds her hand out. I hand her the key. No, she takes it. She's like, "Oh, it's big, but it's pretty light. What must is this? Is this mithril? No, it can't be." She looks at it again. She's like, oh, "Blimey, it sure is a mithril key. Where'd you come across a mithril key? This is worth its weight in mithril already." I mean, I would assume so. No. The city of the dead. The what? She kind of just oh, looks okay. at you like. What were you doing in the City of the Dead? What was this key doing in the City of the... That's what we're hoping to figure out. <laughs> grave robbers. <clears throat> uh, so she hears Probably. you say grave robbers. And oh, she's I'm like, not, oh. Yeah, you're outside, dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll just... I was just saying that. Yeah, he said he was going to go look for work, and now he's just <clears> one <throat> fat dragon head back in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. Grave robbers. So, uh, <laughs> so you didn't say grave robbers. Got it. She's just no. kind of like city, city of the dead. That's a pretty scary place. Even huh, I try to avoid it even during the day. I don't even visit the family. <clears throat> and um, with that, she kind of goes. She sets the key down on the counter. She goes back into the back, and uh, she comes back out, and she's wearing what could only be described as an apparatus, and it's got like. It's just like a headband, but attached to it are numerous lenses on little hinges and pipettes that kind of fold in and out. And she just kind of like flicks one, flicks two, flicks three, flicks four. And then it's like four times magnifying. She's kind of like, oh, I could see the maker's mark on this. I sure can. Um, give, me, give me just a moment. And uh, she has the four still flicked down. And she goes back in the back and she brings out uh, like the biggest fuck all magnifying glass that you've ever seen. And she's got to use two hands to like use it. And she's looking at this thing. Do you need and... help holding that? Oh, uh, you know, actually that would be quite nice. Um, if you have to make another persuasion roll, go ahead and roll it with an advantage. Uh, <laughs> that being said, that being said, yeah, I think, uh, what am I, I think this belonged to, uh, and she names uh, another locksmith that makes very, very, very elaborate locking mechanisms uh, for those basically that need the utmost in security. And uh, <clears throat> she recommends that you follow up with the key to see who may have purchased it with this other locksmith. And the locksmith's name is Elaspra. Wonderful. Thank you. For Where can time. we find this person? Well, I'm just your run-of-the-mill everyday locksmith. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go to our guild hall itself, she typically hangs out there. Hmm. Cool. Okay, so it takes you guys about... Guild hall. <laughs> um, way. It, takes her, it takes you guys about 30 minutes to make your way um, halfway to the dock ward you guys pass by old zolab shop there's a stuffed beholder still kind of creepily facing out from the window there as well as all the other knickknacks and everything and dotagor as you walk past you kind of uh, i won't say finger but you your your hand rests on the pommel of your new sword and you kind of reminded of many many moons ago when you first stopped by the old zolab shop and you guys continue for about another half hour and you make it to the actual guild hall for, uh, you know, the Metal House of Wonders, the guild hall of the Splendid Order of Armorers, Locksmith, and Finesmiths in the Dark Ward. <clears throat> and then uh, you guys kind of go in and it's a bustle. There's 
all sorts of people here. Like, people are in line waiting to get service to help them unlock, like, the door to their house because they misplaced their key. Some people are getting keys made. Some people are getting keys destroyed. There's lots of people, lots of guild members. What do you guys do? Should we start asking around and see if anybody knows where she's at? Yeah, probably. But uh, also, if these assholes try and uh, squanch us back in line, I just want to remind everybody that we are technically on official City Watch business. <laughs> so is that what you lead with? You're like, deputies, deputies, coming through, no, coming through. No, absolutely not. So, uh, but okay. If, yeah, you know, because if you, cause if you can get by saying, it, well, I'm looking for somebody very specific because I need their assistance. Not, I don't need the key destroying dude. I don't need the uh, please unlock the shit that I forgot the the key to guy. So, what do you exactly do? Tell me, do you like uh, push past the line? Well, it depends. Is it like, am I like essentially once I come in, am I forced into the line, or is it sort of open like the other one is, where I need to actively go find some stuff, and then there's like this area with a bunch of people in line. So you peek inside the door, and the line is actually a line to take a number. And uh, there's this chalkboard kind of up front that has the number six on it. And uh, there are about ten people in line ahead of you guys. And uh, they're all getting ready to take that number. But the line's moving fairly fast. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to go up and take the number. You go ahead and walk around and see if you can find this person. Sounds like a deal. Okay. So uh, are you standing in line, Dopey? I will stand in line. Okay. And Dottagor, what do you do? Uh, I am going to see if there's somebody who's not busy assisting people, like off to the side that looks like they are a member of the guild and seeing if I can go talk to them. Okay, well, while, as you're kind of standing there observing with everybody else that's already gotten their number kind of standing, somebody walks over to the chalkboard with an eraser and erases the number six and draws in a very elaborate, like, Georgian font number seven. It takes him about a minute to do it all. And he's like, not comic sans, we're good. Yeah, oh man, near and dear to my heart, but okay. Um, <clears throat> what else would you use to like illustrate Wes's thoughts during D and D if you didn't have Comic Sans? That's true. You're right. Thank you. You're not wrong. It has its place. Love you, Wes. Anyway, I shouldn't discuss an open case. All Comic Sans always. You can well, talk. Yeah, you guys just need to coordinate the unmuting and muting. You guys just need to have like a signal. You guys gotta have like. I mean, you're in the Navy. You have flags. Use them. Yeah, use a flag. We yeah. are. I am not fluent in semaphore, so. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> so it's code. Yeah, sure, but like... Dude, you know uh, how many BB. fucking semaphores we use on a fucking submarine? BB. Goose BB. eggs, baby. BB. BB. <laughs> Not too effective underwater. <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch out for the screen doors, too. Oh, man, those are the worst. There, just waving flags underwater. Yeah, just holding Give our breath here. as hard as we can, you know? <laughs> mayday, mayday. Oh, man. Security, security. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm going to walk up to the person that's doing the number. Yeah, so they're still drawing when you walk up uh, to them. Focus. Me, I, I, I can't remember the name of the one that you just said. Cause it was uh, somewhat... Elaspra is who you're looking for. I'm looking <laughs> for Elaspra. Can you point me in their direction? El 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 Elaspra? Elaspra? Yes. Oh, uh, I don't think I've seen her today. I Um... Well, what's your number? I don't have a number. And then... What do you mean you don't have I, a number? I somewhat motion towards the badge. And he kind of takes a look down. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. God damn it. <laughs> hey. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, he's like, oh. Oh. Um, well, um, Elaspra. Oh she's gosh. probably not going to be at the guild hall proper today, but I can give you directions to her shop. It's in, that would be wonderful. It's in the North Ward. Kind of near Trollskull Alley. Oh, of course. <laughs> and uh, Thank you. he uh, takes out like a little notepad and scribbles down on uh, the thing about address and directions. I'm going to be when it's around the corner. Dude. It's, she set up shop right next to Vince, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you wouldn't know. But she's up in the North Ward and it takes you guys about an hour to make your way back. And uh, along the way... Uh, you pass through an open air market with lots of produce, fruit, vegetables for sale, and as you near the end, there are a lot of food vendors. We're talking this guy's selling tacos, 
This guy's telling Ooh, selling like tacos. chortes, and this guy over here has got kebabs. Oh man, there's even a dude doing fucking sushi right there, fresh fish straight from the fucking ocean right here it's in the soy thing. Sauce. There is soy sauce, man. Uh, let's grab some street tacos and eat on the way. Do we want any soy sauce for later? I don't. <laughs> You've had enough of the soy sauce today, buddy. We can get some uh, some tacos while we're rolling. All right, so you guys kind of walk up to the taco truck, and it's just, it's not really a truck, obviously. It's a horse and buggy and uh taco cart. Yo, you want some tacos? <laughs> See, ignore. What's, what's so funny? You guys don't like tacos? Hey, See, everybody likes tacos. We would, we would like some ta- tacos. Yeah, can I get uh, three steak tacos? to go word Before man oh, hold on homes and he turns around and he's doing some stuff on the grill it's almost like hibachi he's just got some music playing from an old phonograph kind of in the corner and he's just like and he's just like uh no that's racist we can't go that far i already feel bad enough being a pasty white boy doing a hispanic accent so please don't make this any worse but is his name Jay? <laughs> his name That's is racist. My name is Jeff. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not Jeff. His name is Boblin. In case you guys didn't know, <laughs> Boblin. No, Boblin just work in the corner. Huh? The Mexican Goblin is making With all the tacos. accent. Yep. Uh, no, his his name is actually Jeff. But uh, he makes the tacos. He's got some fresh cilantro. You see him chopping it up. He's just like salt bay. Mm, so and uh they're soft tacos that he hands them all to you kind of group together boom 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 like the hulk in infinity wars he's like here's your tacos bro and he's like yo you want some salsa absolutely it's down at the end of the bar man sweet how much do i owe you oh i want one two three four five uh, that'll be about uh 50 copper man what is the copper to the silver ratio it's so 50 is half of one silver Cool. So I'll just give him the silver and tell him to get the change. Oh, thanks, Holmes. And he uh, puts it in his cash box. Or he could have just given. Sally's like, I fucking hate Palmer now. It's you not that he's. <laughs> you realize that Mike is actually Mexican. <laughs> what? Mike yeah. is actually Mexican. Like from Mexico. Not not from Mexico. I was about to say the glare off that dome piece tells me you're a fucking liar. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I did a couple of cholos with some with some dome pieces that were shiny. That's true. That's true. But they're at least not that pale. And he's living in southern Louisiana, so there's no fucking excuse. <laughs> see, he said C. Now I believe it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Unmute. Go ahead, buddy. You can say it. He's not going to talk anymore. He's upset. See, I, much like you, am a cave dweller. If you live inside long enough, eventually you lose your fucking color. I have quite the cave. Unless you're a Thavdorian. Over there, you might see that little purple thing right there. That's a five-foot diameter beanbag. Because that's how I roll, ladies and gentlemen. It is the epitome of comfort. I have two of them. It's comfortable. Dude, it's, it's like really the best. Yeah. You slam in it, it's like a fucking recliner. If you just want to lay on it, it's just... Uh, what can I say? All right, so you guys make your way towards... Uh, you guys are munching on your tacos, making your way towards the North Ward. You finally get to uh, the address of Alaspra's shop. I enter the shop. The door is I locked. Behind. The way is locked. Uh, great. I try the key. Uh, it doesn't even fit in the keyhole. Damn. I'm going uh, to... But with that, you guys kind of hear Dude, something damn. on the inside, and uh, the little shutter that had been pulled down over the door just kind of... <laughs> whips up, and there's uh, an elderly woman standing there, just like peering through thick Coke bottle glasses. She's like... Can I help you? Uh, yes. I hold up the key and my badge. And her eyes kind of... Oh, fuck. 
Well. <laughs> and uh, as you guys stand there, like not only do you hear her unlock the one obvious lock, but then you hear several other like chunks and thuds and jinglings of chains. And then finally, she removes like this bar from the door, and uh, it swings open when they're. Good thing I didn't try to pick that lock. Oh. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you would have been, been so fucked. I probably would have had. You know, to maybe heal at some point. <laughs> Doors, fine. they're that's the baddest boss in D and D, my friends. And that's just with one lock, but this one was super locked. Ooh, while we're here, you should have that some regular here. death, super death. She's got any tips and tricks <laughs> for breaking locks? Ooh, ooh, yeah. See if I can get my lock pick up. Ooh, okay. Okay. Uh, so with that, she kind of ushers you guys into her shop, and um, not terribly dissimilar to uh, the previous locksmith that you guys visited. The pretty bare shop space with a big obviously older, the varnish on this countertop is kind of worn away in spots, kind of where it looks like somebody's rested their elbows on these spots for decades, so there's no more smooth varnish. It's just been worn away by somebody's oh, weenus, right. you know? And uh, from... The old weenus wear down. Yeah, the weenus wear down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, behind the counter is not just like a big array of keys. There's lots of blanks. There's lots of parts. There's lots of uh, ready-made keys. There is also a break in case of emergency glass box, but it is currently empty in this store. Um, <laughs> and is the glass broken? No, the glass is not broken, unfortunately. Uh, that being said, there instead of like there being a back to the shop that you guys couldn't see, there's like an engraver, there's a grinding wheel, there's all kinds of machinery, equipment kind of on the opposite end of the counter to where the cash box and the cash register are. <sighs> She's like, so, um, what'd they do? Uh, well... We actually cannot divulge that information. It's part of an ongoing case. Oh, Jesus. Are they dead? They still owe me half. Well, if that's the case, you I'm sure you'll be able to bring that up. I'll uh, actually take note of it here so yeah. that when the time comes, we can have that brought up in court as part of the restitutions, even and if... we are actually currently looking for them as well, do you have records of you know, where they lived so that we can go and see where they are or find out if anybody's seen them. Hey, you you don't know where they live, but you got that key. Both of you guys roll perception. Or not perception, persuasion. Do I have advantage? Nope. Okay. 18. Okay. Um, She's just kind of like... What did you say again with this persuasion roll? Um... If she had their address so that we could go and see if anybody had in that area had seen them. Well, uh, I, mean, I know where I installed the lock. I don't know if that's their address. It looked pretty run down to say. That information would be equally as important to us. I don't normally share client privileged information can you at least like make this hard for me so that they don't think that i'm just some you know sort of absolutely we, we have made this extremely difficult this has been a terribly grueling process for all of us i think and she kind of gives you like the little good old-fashioned wink and she's like all right here and she grabs a, a piece of parchment and she jots down the address and she's like it's it's an old converted windmill kind of you know uh uh, well, I wrote down the address. and if you, you write down the names of the so that all the information's in one spot? Oh, well, uh, I suppose. Hold on one second. Let me write them down. And she writes down the names Volcar and Erlaster and Boblin. You don't happen to have their last names, do you? Uh, well, no. I don't typically need last names. And I don't know if these were noblemen. They didn't really... Strike me as such. They live in an old rundown windmill, so... Wonderful. Well, I appreciate your assistance. We're so sorry for all of the inconveniences and how difficult it was for you to give us this information. Well, yes. Thank you for your discretion. I'm going to go ahead and give you two silver as well for your time. Oh. 
Aren't you a pleasant young man? Okay. Um, so she gives you guys the address to this old run-down windmill. It's a uh, windmill! Kind of near the farm ward, if you guys remember. That's where you guys were hunting Scarecrow. Mm-hmm. Um, to the sweat that drips down my bobbling? Good old bobbling. So is that where you guys want to head now? It's getting yeah. to about... It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You guys have had the tacos for lunch. So. That's the time that I How want to go. How far away is it? Uh, from the north ward? It's like the next ward above you. For the so if north. Outside jog, How long would it take us to get there? Uh, if you jog, let me show you. What if it was a brisk walk? Like Olympic fast walking? Maybe about an hour. So it's 2pm. That's easy. Yeah. So you guys are here. And right the field ward is uh, there. <clears throat> yep. I thought the windmill Is there a bounty board anywhere around me? Uh, roll an investigation check. Oh, sweet. I am good at these. Okay. Uh, I am also looking for work as I am broke. Uh, as he says... Oh, wow. I actually rolled very good. Never mind. Um, so, Nick, you don't spot it first, but uh, Derry ends up seeing it. Uh, there is a... I don't know if it's a bounty board necessarily, but maybe notice just like board. a notice board from the the like city the watch. Whatever. And it's just information wanted for the Zentarum Association. Any known associates or the whereabouts of such would be highly rewarded, let alone if you apprehend members of the Zentarum themselves. Now, uh, at the bottom, does it say anything in fine print about being dead and apprehended? It doesn't say anything about dead or alive. Does it say who we need to speak to about it? Yes, City Watch. Oh, so us. Us. Great. Yeah. Help, 911. Well, I need- you guys remember from when the incident at Grawlhund Villa, Barnas Blastwind and Mr. Crumley filled you guys in and basically let you guys know that, hey, we are just taking it, taking it to the Zentarum. Um, to the point where they've really rounded up a lot of them. Sweet. The last known information that you had about any members of the Zentarum were when you talked to the intelligent horse. I think her name was Maggie. I don't remember her, but uh, okay. she she lets you guys know that, that she dropped off two members of the Zentarum at the Yawning Portal that one time. Right. Did we ever follow up with that? Nope. Yes. I mean, you guys went to the Harpers and gave that information. Yeah, we didn't, like, keep following them. <laughs> but you haven't followed any of the I mean, until now, there's not really been a reason to. True. I mean, we okay. can just go back and see about, you know, getting mindful aid again. <laughs> <laughs> you could. It sounds <laughs> like a wonderful plan. Kaz, you're the bait. Go in there really loud. <laughs> Earn your rent. You're still you're muted, sure. bro. Oh man, Fair. I need to. Fair. Anything else on the board? Um, there's a reward offered of fifty silver for a missing cat. Is there a picture of the cat? Uh, yeah, it looks surprisingly like a black and white version of Eugene. We're not doing it. <laughs> Cats are notoriously hard to catch. <laughs> notoriously hard. Especially if you don't have to speak with animals. Even a mighty hunter such as myself could not <laughs> tell this beast <laughs> or capture it. Fair not enough. Anymore. Okay. Um, <clears throat> on the board itself, there's a few torn pages. Like It looks like there was some signs there or more advertisements, that kind of thing. Uh, but nothing remains. Like The little pins or the staples kind of tore the corners out of the page, and that's all that's left. Gotcha. Keep our eye out for more boards in case there's other ones. Okay, what's your passive perception? 15. 15? Your passive perception's 15? No, 11, excuse me. I said it, I looked at investigation. Oh, I was like, god damn. Uh, my passive perception is 15. Wow, okay. Very cool. Yes. Um, Tilly's is 14. Cool. What's Tilly's not with you. Wisdom, dude. What the fuck? Tilly has some wisdom, if I recall. Yeah. Wow. It's got more wisdom 
then you know intelligence <laughs> a wise old turtle <laughs> <laughs> so you guys want to head over to the windmill to the windmill to the wall to the wall the soy sauce on my I wall i already made that <laughs> come on i didn't hear it so it was new to me all right you guys find yourself at the address listed by alaspra um at the windmill covered in mysterious black inkiness Ooh. <laughs> and these are the doors here i go to the door okay uh that door is unlocked you guys go to those doors yeah i do uh the door that you and Derry are at is locked can i inspect the lock to see if i might be able to pick it Go ahead and give me a persuasion or a perception check first. Can I investigate the strength of this door? Uh, that door <laughs> looks rickety as hell. It is like the dry rod is set in. The hinges itself are missing screws or bolts. Like it's. Uh, I don't think I should kick this down. I don't know who owns it. Don't worry. <clears throat> just lightly lean on it. You know. Uh, no. <coughs> You should hear Derry. Cool, yeah. Well, well, Mr. Paladin, I don't know if this is your sort of business, but we're about to technically uh, break the Fourth Amendment of Waterdeep real quick. You're going to unlawfully they detain people? Oh, did you hear screaming from inside? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Habeas corpus! <laughs> Probable cause! I did not know that. That is a 13 for perception. Okay, uh, you hear quiet rustling inside mm-hmm. and hushed voices. I would like to strengthfully knock on the door. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom. You hear uh, what sounds like uh, an old man. It's like, yes? Who is it? Hello? Uh, you yeah, sound... People over here. You sound strong. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm, yes, we are part of the Windmillers Guild. <laughs> <laughs> Make a bluff check. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ahead and do this. Hey man, I came up with it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and lend him some help. Nope. <laughs> Not today. Sorry. Should have said it in the beginning. Listen, dude, we already know that this is key. Room inspection. <laughs> Room inspection. Oh man. I got a good story about that. Me but anyway. too. Um housekeeping. <laughs> so housekeeping. You say windmills guild and I'm, I'm, I might be old, but I'm not stupid. It was a bit of a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have some questions. Who, who, who is it? Hello? Uh, yeah, this is the city watch. We so, have some questions. And you guys here kind of just like, hey, they said the city watch. I don't know what to do. So uh, what again. you guys kind of hear is the Busted. door just kind of open and several very dirty people, as well as a few farm animals are inside Fireball. this one room. <laughs> <laughs> Cleansing the world. <laughs> I was about to say, Wes isn't here, <laughs> so no. Yeah, no alchemist fire, just randomly. Uh, accidental fireball? Vibe check. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the people inside just kind of look and kind of take thinking. a step back. That's a spell. Oh, yeah. Fail on a three. No, it's a four better now, right? Four yes. or worse? <laughs> yeah, it's a four now. No, it's not. What is it? Oh. So it's a three? So it's a three. Damn, he is really mad that somebody got that number wrong. <laughs> you had two, wow. two spots from one. Take it down there, bud. Yeah, remember, that's ah, a superior that's officer awesome. over there, Mike. You better behave. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> he got a crow. Oh, he, he, let, he let it go to his head. Oh, man, the fucking E4 Mafia is here to stay. All right, so yeah, all these obviously <laughs> poor people, because, you know, they've got shit on them, are living in this room. What are you I guys doing? Vote for him. <laughs> I didn't vote for you. <laughs> Must be some kind of now violence. we see the violence inherent to the system. Help! I'm being oppressed. <laughs> That's me. You don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dopey's gonna knock on his door as well. And you hear a little 
tiny voice saying, like just on the other side of the door, you just hear, Hello? It's definitely Bob Lent. Hello? Yes, are, are you okay in there? Hi, this is Jake from State Farm. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Are you okay? Uh, I don't know. Can I can I come in and find out? That's really weird. I'm telling my mom. Go ahead, grab her. Go get your mom. And uh, so. All right. Well, while while they're busy talking to civilians, I'm going in this way. <laughs> Ooh, I just figured out a cool thing. Apparently, if you hold somebody's like token and then you right click, you can measure the range and everything. That's crazy. Anyway. Oh, wow. oh wow. <laughs> Did you guys see that? That's cool. Yeah. Lessons yeah. learned. Uh, so um, you hear another person Ooh. from the other side of the door. I was like, I made a mistake. Excuse okay. me. Who who is this? You you went in here. I can show you too. Well, I didn't mean to go in there, but yeah, I just didn't want to like throw myself into the fucking room if it was locked. Uh, seeing as how those doors here, I'm gonna. Copy. We're just gonna ask questions. That door is locked. Dopey, uh, what do you say to this new voice? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I have been sent out to check on the welfare of the people out in the windmill. Well, welfare? We didn't get those checks. <laughs> um, well, we're, we're fine. Fine. we're fine. We're fine in here. Thank you. I'm Thank sorry, you for I your have consent. To lay eyes on everybody. Who are you again? Make a persuasion check. Eighteen. And what do you say? Uh, I am the welfare inspector. Now make a bluff check. Exception don't fail me now. <laughs> 27. <laughs> Dude, I like that Dopey, that Dopey does have the stealth to properly be a rogue, but is essentially just that half-orc rogue that just, you don't see shit! Yeah, the, the intimidate rogue. It's like... Yeah. Grok not here. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, Grok's not here, guys. Grok's not here, guys. Oh, who's um, Grok? Oh, what? So uh, the door oh, swings shit. open. It's like that is oh, a, actually a, that's actually a twenty nine, not a twenty seven. My deception is plus ten now. Good lord. Ugh, I'm gonna give you so much disadvantage, and then I'm gonna drop rocks on your character <laughs> <laughs> for both me I... and for Mike, because I hear about what you do. I hear things. <laughs> <laughs> I heard things, things the breeze, All right. <laughs> he almost my with finger of death. All right, he's good. I did almost finger of death. Man, I've probably finger of death some people in my time. Just saying. Well, fucking That's... Jerry, fucking javelin of death, Tim. So. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> you like finished the colonoscopy on him of death, Tim. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I have no you idea what anyone the was talking about. Was barbed spear just ripped it that came way. out of nowhere it was heaven's might <laughs> uh, so yeah the door opens and there's uh, two small children in a room with an older woman all Call it a very dirty oh gross I need eight, uh, <laughs> names and ages for everybody for the welfare check uh, well this here is uh, Betty and behind me to my left is Valerie and uh, my name is Tiffany I, I need ages as well. Tells me we don't want breakfast from Tiffany. Um, hey, 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 well, hey, she's man. she's six, and um, do you have paperwork? Do you have some sort of badge? Uh, Why do you yeah. look like you have like a pride crown? That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Darius Church is not as nearly as oppressive as some <laughs> I love it. No, we're very open minded. We stand that. And as we're dragonborns, <laughs> I uh, I quickly flash her my badge and put it back. Oh, oh wait, wait! I, I didn't, I didn't see that. Slide of hand one more time. Whoop, I just slap in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally that... knocks him unconscious. Oh well, passed out because you hold nice. it up for a little bit longer for her. Not for a little bit longer. Like the same speed is. Oh, I think I saw a couple of the letters I know there. <laughs> okay. Um, I know those words. <laughs> yeah, it just says female body inspector on the bed. She, <laughs> she can't read, so she thinks it's official. <laughs> inspector, what? She's, she's trying to bluff you. Um, it's like, oh, well, she's uh, she's seven. Uh, mm -hmm. She's ten. And I'm, uh -huh. I'm, uh, I'm 23. And are you single? 
Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I think we learned from LGBTQ uh, ages. Uh, she matter, uh, looks you up and down. <laughs> um, she gives you a sultry no. <laughs> hmm. I open this door. Jack, he looks at the kids. Jack, have a good day. <laughs> over here. Go ahead and roll me an insight check real quick before you uh, depart. <laughs> It's definitely not 23. <laughs> One of them kids is 10, dog. I know it's back in the day, but it ain't that back in the day. She's telling the truth. About this not being single. <laughs> Kick back you. Get over here and join Stadagor. Okay, so you're trying this door. And, uh, you guys kind of jiggle the door, and it's locked, but as you jiggle it, it actually falls in. To the room in front of you. Oh my god, I'm so fucking yoked. Boom. <laughs> hey, what? What? What's that? What? Hey, are uh, you? We're with the census. <laughs> literally find everybody differently every fucking time. IRS. Roll a bluff check. <laughs> out of the way. Twenty-eight. Oh, census. What's what's that? Uh, we just, we just like need to find out uh, uh, names and ages of everybody that lives here. Yeah, we're just counting people. It's, well, it's for tax purposes. It, both of them just kind of say, like, well, I'm Boblin, and that's Boblin. <laughs> and, both and this is my aged. other brother, Boblin. And you both uh, are aged in numbers. Uh, um, well, well, his name's Joblin. I know I've been alive for his a little bit. Bob- yeah, this is Obi-Wan. <laughs> Let's think here. Uh, and that over there is Obi-2. I think I'm... No, and he just kind of goes like this. He's like, this many? Maybe. Alright, close enough. And, uh, Bobblin's about that same. Is there anybody over here in this room? Um... Um... Do you try the go. door? Gotta check, try the door. It's open, and it opens with a creak. And, uh, there is what appears to be a dead body and a very malnourished woman. Uh, hey, Bobble 1, Bobble 2, what's with the dead body? What? what? There's no dead body in there! That's very unsanitary. We need, that's we need Leonard. He that's where like that. Boblin <laughs> and <laughs> Boblin in there. There's, no, it's, it's <laughs> Lenny and Lena in there. Lenny! <laughs> <laughs> with that, what you guys suspected was a corpse... Kind of just kind of goes, oh, Lenny. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. <laughs> My work here is. <laughs> Where's Tilly? Uh, we, Derry, do we you try lie. that door we, there? We locked right, right, right. Tilly in his room. Uh, yeah, I'll try this one. Okay. He's not safe to do the census today. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially with all these people. You said you did try the door? Yeah, I'm on. Did, I'm revealing did you lock it? Now. it? Uh, so that door is unlocked oh, and it lock opens him. to reveal an empty room. I'd like to investigate the room just to make sure, you know, there's no traps or uh, anything right. hiding. Well, they check that. I'm okay. up the stairs. Oh, yeah, I did a great job. Right behind you. All right. So you guys end up over. Thank you. Are you checking out that room or? I am contemplating because I don't really know where. <laughs> did you say you're consecrating these grounds? Yes. I can't hear you because you're fucking muted. Walking around in a ritual. I'm cutting my hand with my boomerang and the whole thing. That's real grim dark of you, bro. He's putting runes all over. Not a You start be cutting yourself in front of other people. <laughs> all right, so uh, you guys make it up here. I'll go with him to the door. Cool. Uh, uh, okay. That uh, for sure looked like a fucking turret, but I know it's not because this is a fucking windmill. <laughs> Yep, that is definitely a grindstone. I do, but like if you look at that shit, <laughs> it does. It, it looks, looks like, like a turret. A yeah, it looks like a turret. I didn't you make the map. The I door stole door. it from somebody else. So, oh, um, so you guys <laughs> open that door there, right? Yeah. So you guys see. Screw you guys, I'm going. Home. Whoops, that's supposed mm-hmm. to be a reveal. Why is that not? You double darked it. There we go. Uh, you guys find a room containing a large millstone kind of laying on the ground. The wooden timbers that would have connected it to the actual wood mill proper since rotted. And you can find little bits and pieces of them kind of strewn about the floor here. 
And then there's one uh, small ancient doorway. I don't. <clears throat> uh, check over call here. It ancient. Don't touch it. So uh, you open Not that me. door to W3 and make a constitution check. Ah, oh, shit. That's exactly what it is. Oh! Okay. Uh, so, Derry, you okay, take no. one level of exhaustion from how... Or not Derry. Uh, that would be Mike. You take one oh. level of exhaustion from fucking vomiting so profusely over the insanely disgusting smell that you can taste that overwhelms you of just putrid, fetid shit. Like... This is what you made Dopey smell like. And now, well, not you, Kaz. You are, you take one level of exhaustion, so you have disadvantage on skill checks, but you are retching. Like, you lose all your tacos all over the wall of this windmill. Hey, you owe me fucking silver for that, bud. And uh, Dopey and Dottagor, go ahead and make perception checks. Yikes. 15. Just here's. <laughs> My perception change at all. <clears throat> nice. I did. 16. Sorry. 16. It's all right. So, uh, Dopey, you hear the sound of profuse vomiting happening downstairs. Yes, oh, it's joy. Awesome. Yeah. Which means uh, that maybe somebody else can too. Downstairs. Do you want to check uh, it out? I'm, keep keep check out. Out. I'm just going to keep walking. Did you check W4A right. there, uh, Derry? Uh, I was, but then I saw him. Puke his guts so out you're after just not going to investigate so, uh, while we're fun. trying to investigate because this dude opened the room to the shitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it stank like C. diff, but come on. Uh, so you oh. open up W4. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Uh, oh, perception. My enemy. Okay, yeah, you don't notice anything of any note in W4. Oh. All right. Chuckles in metagame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't be just going to check the door to you for B. Uh, okay. So you open it. No, it's unlocked. Um, what's your passive perception again? 15. 15. Okay. Um, so do you want to look inside? Absolutely. And investigate? Yep. Uh, go ahead and make a dexterity save. Oh shit, there's a turret up here. 21. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> okay. Fucking technical at the top of the stairs, man. <laughs> so you take two damage, and Dottagor and Derry, both of you guys hear this. The floor collapses underneath you. Um, it's just old, rotted stone and wood, and ah! you just with a <laughs> collapses Are into you okay? W4 Alpha. And you're just like, hello! <laughs> And ow. Dopey, right, well, you're that's... just like, ow! Hey, don't uh. go in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not... You gotta do it for up. both sides there, Derry. It shuts the door. Right now it just says 39 out of 25. If you click the settings tab for your character, it'll show you. <laughs> Homer, I yeah. used uh, press the digitation to clean myself. Okay, go ahead and roll a wild magic surge. And I'm excited because on a three or worse, you fail it. Ooh. Oh. Getting close. All right, four or oh, worse. Four. four or worse from now on. All right, moving on. Uh, you Dopey guys. Door. I got to go back to the other screen. Hold on. All right, so Dopey and Dottagor, you guys are in Dairy. Dairy, you're revealing that floor right there. Just opening up. And there's W6. Um, <clears throat> you just find more cobwebs and more what looks like ancient rusted out equipment or rotting equipment uh, that really doesn't really have a purpose, no useful value in W6. Um, and then, Dottagor, you open that door. Uh, you go to try and open it. And you notice a shiny new lock on the door. I try the shiny key. It moves in, and the, the action of the key is so smooth and just crisp, and it just turns with a kerchunk. And from inside, you hear kind of a <gasps> gasp as wow. you open the door. 
to reveal a couple of familiar faces. Everybody roll initiative. Stop in the name of the claw. Fuck. Oh, Nathan. 10. 17. 24. Hold on, let me delete everybody and then add everybody again. Sweet. We can do this, Dyke. All right. I need one for questioning, boys. <laughs> Hopefully the fact that the, you guys are down a guy doesn't really hurt. Oh. I'll just give myself Tilly's health. And, uh, Our weapons are silver now. HP. It's true, it's true. Someone cast Fireball, quick. I got you. Yeah, in the busted windmill <laughs> with floors that aren't safe. I got you, man. I cast Sudden J-Dam. All right. Dotagor, you enter your stuff in real quick. Yes, sir. And then I can put these in order. Uh, Derry, you, despite not being at the door, somehow get the jump on these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of your pole arm. You're just going to oh. be like javelining into them. And, and what just are turn, they? do a 190 Don't degree turn. No. Stay away from my ass. <laughs> just pull the fact that you have to warn of one of the members of your party that is watch your asses. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, Whoa, hold coming. just like a nice little Samuel L. Jackson. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> I'm terrible at Samuel L. Jackson. I will never be able to do that man's amazing voice. All right, so uh, like that, that'd be great. The two uh, Dwarga grave robbers that you guys remember seeing from the City of the Dead kind of jump up and grab improvised weapons. One's got this spade. It's almost like an army shovel. It kind of like folds out as he flicks his wrist. An and the other guy just has a trowel. <laughs> and he's like, ah! And then, as you guys watch, he reaches behind his back and he goes, ha ha! And it's another trowel. <laughs> I was going to oh laugh. God. It was a spoon. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they're ready for you. <laughs> All right. That smells amazing. Is my... Oh, oh me? Oh, um... <clears throat> uh, I'm going to cast Bless on these three people. Nice. Is it concentration? Uh, it is concentration for up to one minute. Okay. What does it do? Uh, whenever a target makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends... The attack the target can roll a d4 and add that roll to the attack roll or saving throw. Hmm. Very nice, nope. very nice. It's gonna and be a lot easier not to whiff. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna move up. Yeah, and... The Durgars armed with digging implements turn menacingly towards you. <laughs> Turns menacingly away. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> quick, let me face the wall real quick. Both of you guys at the door make perception checks for me. 12. 16. Haha, -ha, I can see things again. Dopey, you're having trouble kind of seeing into the doorway with the angle that you're at, but Dottagor, man, these guys are in their skivvies. Full blown, just underpants. They're asleep. Where did he pull the other trial from? Hashtag no the real question. This, boys. <laughs> hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. I don't want to know what kind of desperate times. You're the one it. that asked the question. If you didn't want to know, you shouldn't have asked. It was his butthole. Let's all be honest here. Freaky. His prison wallet. Yep. Nature's pocket. No. Ooh. That was stuffed in his in the back of his <laughs> underpants. Like you keep trowels. You know that's what you do with them. Anyway. Is that weather called trousers. I think you guys are focusing on the wrong. Points. I think <laughs> Doc is obsessed with what part of the body this guy's been smuggling his gardening tools. <laughs> he can't even see. He's clambering over Dotagor to try to get a peek at these what? guys. What's going on? <laughs> no, I'm almost as tall as he is. All right, so Derry, you cast Bless. Do you want to move? All right. Oh, in which case, no. double trowel boy. Is going to walk up, square off with our pal Dottagor, and make two attack rolls. A 17 and an 18. Both hit. Okay. What? 
Yeah, I only have a 16 AC. I'm waiting for my shit to get here. True. Takes seven damage as he just like doubles down and just like -da -da! with both trowels and they're rusty too. Like you might get a nasty case of tetanus from this, you know? Might have you roll a con save. Not with a poke. <laughs> we'll see. Poking intensifies. <laughs> Up next is Dotagor for a retort. Uh, I'm gonna bonus action hit this boy with the uh, blood curse. Mm, you gonna make him bloat? Erect. As well. Ooh, take your 1d4, son. Oh, it's the 1d6 now. Ooh, does it do more when you amplify it now? Ooh. Yeah. Um, so now if he decides to make two attacks, he's going to start taking necrotic damage. All right. Oh. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, take two swings on the uh, one in front of me. All right. Go for it. Stand sky. Oh, no. The first one will hit, the second one will not. I figured. Go ahead and roll damage. Eleven damage. Oof. Okay. Uh what do you do? Uh I would swing at his wrist. Okay. And then slash up the torso. Uh, he manages to move his arm kind of out of the way, and he gets the the trowels kind of double together, kind of catches the blade, but you're just too strong, and it sinks into his shoulder, but he kind of catches the blade and lessens the blow a bit. Uh, that being said, he is bleeding now, and it's Dopey's turn. Dopey is going to dagger attack this fool who dared to attack his friend. All right. For a 25, does that hit? That... Does not hit. No, I'm just kidding. Yes, it fucking hits. It's 25. His AC tripled. <laughs> <laughs> so that is going to do an armed AC. That's plus my sneak attack because I can. Uh huh. Which is now 3d6. Oh no. And then he's also going to do whales from the grave on this okay. guy over here. Okay. For 11 damage. Alright. So the first guy takes 15. Seven. The next guy. That's your sneak attack damage. Seven. Oh yeah, 15. Sorry. So 15 total, right? Yes. Um, he. How do you want to do this? So because he's got the trials crossed and the sneak into his shoulder, no, he's going to come up underneath him and just like stab him through the underside of his jaw up into his brain. Like, what? Don't we and need the information the from these guys? That's why the other one's still alive. The whale's from the grave to the other guy. So he's like clutching his head as he's yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. So the other guy, like you said, is clutching his head and he just sees you reach around, like just a small, tiny hand, just <laughs> skewer the skull of his pal here. It would and, be a regular fight. And he's just like, ah! And uh, he drops his army shovel to the ground. Please, please don't hurt me, please! Kick the shovel over. He kicks the shovel over. Yeah. Dopey grabs the shovel. Okay. Uh, you now have a uh, army shovel. You may add it to your inventory. <laughs> are we still in combat? Uh, you guys uh, are not in combat if you don't want to be. Oh, sweet. Custom items. I don't know. I could poke this dude. <laughs> I don't think that'd be wise. What do you mean? Information is necessary. Yeah, well, I mean that, but like also, hey, bud, <laughs> why don't you give me uh, all the information you got? I saw you, uh, or my buddy saw you the other night at the uh, graveyard. Those fucking barking boxes. Those were a delight. That was that was that was you. I'm uh, I'm sorry. Don't hurt me. Roll intimidation. Uh, Roll to seduce. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Roll to bye bye. <laughs> Orange <laughs> pocket size. I prefer fun size Snickers. Uh, Thank you I very get, much. Advantage on it because he's currently bloating in extreme agony from some shit he doesn't even know about. Sure. Mm, can cool. I check 16. in here? Uh, that's good enough. 
Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, don't hurt me. I'll, I'll tell you. What, what do you want to know? We didn't even find anything in the ground. We were just getting bodies. Bodies for what? What's in the other room? Um, nothing. I'll open it up. Will that be an inside check to see if he's lying? Nope. I mean, we can open it up anyway. It's nothing. Uh, when you get in here, the roof of room W8 is actually partially collapsed, and parts of it are on the floor, uh, and lots of bird droppings everywhere, as a number of different pigeons have taken roost in the uh, ceiling in this room. Hmm. Uh, See? Look, I told you! Told you the, told you the truth! Told you! It's, there's nothing in there! I'm looking for the Stone of Galore. Where is so it? Gonna go around stone of Galore? Cool. You mean so that I thing? Like to investigate around. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Um... You find a wood-framed king-size bed with a rather clean mattress, at least compared to what you've seen in the other rooms of this windmill. It's the only mattress. Yeah, and uh, the window was recently repaired, and it uh, quietly swings open on oiled hinges. And there's a wooden armoire. Dopey is searching the wooden armoire. Okay. You find four sets of clean clothes, two gray cloaks, a heavy crossbow, and a wooden case containing 20 crossbow bolts. What about W8? Uh, like I said, there's nothing in there except for class oh, roof man. and pigeons. Huh. And doo-doo. Yo, nasty. Pigeon poo. Yep. Pigeon doo. Uh... Um, and it was like, you mean that, that thing that the rat was carrying? Yes. Just... Oh, well, I don't have that. I gave it to... I gave it to my boss. Which is who, and where is he? He starts realizing that his buddy's dead, and he's like, <laughs> Alastair came to me, like, two weeks ago, and he said, hey, we finally got a job, we're gonna, we're gonna make it, we finally Nobody's got it. Nope, he's gonna slap him, and shake him, and tell him to get to the point. Is it possible to break out the uh, lock and key from this door just to you know? I have the key. Oh, the the lock. Um, if you're asking if you can uninstall the lock, it might be something that somebody with thieves' tools might be able to accomplish with a decent enough check. But uh, it will take a considerable amount of time. It's not also really worth it. Um. So I mean, it's potentially mithril, so it could be worth it. It's, yeah. it's enough to make a lock. Which would be That's enough to lock. make a dagger. Depends on how, uh, how big the a lock is. Dagger? What are you fucking fighting? Fairy light? I mean, we could just you wouldn't want to fight fairies that. with mithril anyway. You want cold iron from them. Anyway, uh, so he kind of comes to since it's like <sighs> about a week ago uh, last uh, he um, came to me and told me about this job says we're finally going to have enough money to move out of the windmill, and we just need to go to the City of the Dead. Get on with it. We're going to break into the mausoleums, and we're going to steal dead bodies, and we're going to take those dead bodies to this guy. His name's Lasser. Lasser Mer something. Oh, Lasser Mer Lav. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. He's a he's a necromancer, but you see how we live. We're starving Here. every day. What's the punishment for defiling graves in your religion? Wait, you're the one with the badge. Why don't you know what the punishments are? No, if so, what he's asking is, what is your religious punishment? Like in what, your what, religion, in, what in the, the paladin? What, if like, you were to yeah. die right now? Oh, Where would you go based on this? I'm not religious. I'm agnostic. That's fair. No, I, I'm asking Derry. I know. That's he, he thought you were asking him. So fucking he was, nothing. Yeah, Sally. Uh, what? <laughs> he's talking uh, to you, man. <laughs> uh, well, um, no, murder bad. We didn't well, kill nobody. We never killed Holy anyone. Jesus, you're as bad as Wesley. <laughs> We, oh, just, uh, we just took bits and pieces. Graves. We're defiling graves right, and bodies. Um... Tick tock. Pitter patter. What does the lawful good guy think about defiling graves? Don't do it. 
<laughs> What's the punishment for doing it? Solid answer. Uh, it's like the SAT answer right there, buddy. Also, where's your boss? Tell me where your boss is, tiny man. Oh, well, we, we always drop off our deliveries. Um, where? You have to go to this wig shop. It's kind of embarrassing. It's next to this really nice, like, sewing shop. The, the, the thread and needle. It's called Dandy Mops. It's right next door. Dandy Mops, okay. And, well, they live underneath it in the trades ward. And that's where we made our deliveries. We, we kept everything. We would always take one coffee and, and stuff it with as many, uh, as many bodies as we could. And, yeah, that's what we did. And I gave him the stone because it didn't seem worth anything. And I'm sorry. Can you help my friend? Oh, he's dead. Really? <laughs> kind of whimpers. What is my... Uh, oh, so, my to God. your last question, um, being kicked out of the church and branded as an exile. Oh, last... So, Dopey pulls Dottagor aside real quick. So, we just killed his best friend, right? Um... <laughs> This dude lives at a windmill. Honestly, we could probably buy his loyalty by giving him a job. Oh, for sure, dude. But I uh, <laughs> don't want grave robbers working for us. Well, he would no longer be a grave robber once he starts working for us. He'd be a I reformed want... grave robber. I don't feel comfortable with this. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, I, don't, I don't really feel like giving the... Uh, the, the so you, 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 have, you have a job? Speech. Did I see but, the? Uh, did I hear you say you might have a job? Hey, you well, shut friend, your I'm mouth. Okay. I'll keep doing D sixes to myself all day, bro. Don't test me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here, here's two silver. Find yourself a new line of work, and then I'm uh, I'm gonna fucking leave and go to the fucking shop. Well, I used to dig ditches. Go have my shovel back. <laughs> Use your buddy's trowels. They're not good for ditch work. I don't care. Do you also want to end up in a ditch? Because I'll happily use the shovel and dig it and put you in one right now. Or we could, you know, sentimental kill you, value. Use the two bodies for the necromancer. Uh, quick it's question. True. Go ahead and roll intimidation. The door, the door hinges on this door. Yeah. They're all, the whole door is completely new. Oh, damn. Dude, what's your fascination with the fucking... 24 to intimidation. I'm trying to get this... So, uh, uh... I understand. Uh, you, you can keep it. It was a gift from my mom. Can't imagine she would think well of a grave robbing son. God damn it. All right, here. Right, I'm fucking hands it back to him. Oh, Marceline, you're back. He kind of <laughs> cradles it close to him. Maybe he was born with it. Maybe it's Marceline. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's Marceline. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what do you guys want to do from here? Can you want to take this lock off? All right. No. What, what is your obsession? Door? Well, I mean, we need money. This is kind of pricey. Hey, you want to know what there's going to be a lot of money at? The necromancer's place. And we get to kill him and take all of his shit. So let's go do that. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you looted and the I... bad guys instead of giving them silver, you guys would be able to have gold I it silver and then yeah. i'm down to kill him and, and take it but the paladin said the fucking rules were exiled <laughs> got a little bit of money from <laughs> dotting is just like hey derry turn around Tur yeah you're I'm, turn just around. Demand the, I'm just gonna demand the money that they got from me, from some of the bodies oh well, well he goes over to the trunk and he lifts out uh, two whole loaves I, of bread and a satchel full of like various fruits and vegetables and hands them to you. Hey, Derry, wait downstairs, man. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Ben, you, did, didn't you hear something down in that other room? You should take Derry with you. Yeah, for sure needs to be investigated. <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing. <laughs> There's a black area over here we haven't looked at yet. Yeah, you look that up. Definitely uninvestigated. <laughs> Binky's yeah. like, I don't see color. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, do you guys want to try and make your way into W6? W6, this place over here? Uh, it's also W6 over here. W6 Part 2, The Revenge? Yeah. I this guess. This area right here get... is W6. Sure. How do we get in there? There is a door right here. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... Do I have to jump oh. over the hole? Basically. Word. I'll make that athletics check all day. Well, Binky, go ahead and make an athletics check first since you went ahead yeah, and jumped in there. You fucking did it. You win. No takesies, backsies. Figure it out. <laughs> You figure it out. He, he, used, he used all of your takesies, backsies in the last fucking one. <laughs> you do have a thing for athletics. I do, but I don't have a Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, make a dexterity save. Uh, I killed a Durgar. Now that nobody's in the fucking room. 17. Okay. Um, the door is open. I can I'll, see I'll it. I'll happily roll for it. He welcomes the embrace of death, and you chop his fucking head off. Can I get that uh, shovel back? And uh, <laughs> uh, you you don't know that he's just murdered him. All you oh, hear God, is no. like a squelch. And uh, like, oh, a little... Bleh! Would that be an intelligence check to, you know, make the connection? You don't... You, you've, you've murdered enough sleeping goblins in your time to know... Bobby! What a mercy killing sounds like. <laughs> hey, hey, Dadagor, can, can you bring me that shovel? Uh... Absolutely. Thanks, bro. <laughs> All right, so uh, where's your save there, big guy? 17? Okay, so you take two damage, uh, and you fall into the floor below. You just... Woo! Wow, wow. nice. Uh, right there. Ooh, ouch. What are you doing? 19 on the athletics check to hop over the hole. You, you're you're in some rubble. Your foot's stuck. Uh, 19 to roll? Yeah, you get over there, and you find a room full of pigeon droppings. Yes! <laughs> I <laughs> Much value, down. such worth. <laughs> I jumped out. I don't know. Is pigeon dropping worth a lot here? No. Yeah. No, it's not. All these people make their clothes out of it. Let's just put it out. There you go. Oh. I'm just kidding. Okay. With that, we're going to stop here. You guys can uh, remember where we're going after this, probably headed towards the workshop. It is currently about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and the Trades Ward is pretty close by. Uh, it's about halfway. You guys got to go through the North Ward from the Field Ward to get to it. Um, that being said, everybody that's hung out and watched tonight, thank you very much for hanging out. Uh, the video for last week's session should be out on Tuesday. Uh, we will be here at the same bat time, same bat place, Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you guys want to come hang out, watch us play some more Dungeons & Dragons. I also stream during the week, Tuesday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you guys like Magic the Gathering, just generally talking about nerdy shit, come hang out. Hashtag uh, shuffle me daddy. Shuffle me daddy. Mm. Just gonna take this mithril lock to the... Uh, <laughs> just the rip, rip the door off the hinges. <laughs> Not me daddy. <laughs> God, dude, if you keep fucking with this door. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said... And they're not using it anymore. I will try and be a little earlier with mini RPs this week. And otherwise, we'll figure it out. Yeah, also, what's the damage for my fucking the kunais? Um, a kunai? It's just a dagger. All right, guys. Thank you guys for having. Uh, thanks. Thank you guys for hanging out, and thanks everybody in the chat. Everybody, have a good night. Okay, bye. Hey, guys. It's me, Naked, and on behalf of the crew, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please consider hitting the like button. And if you want to see more D and D tomfoolery, please feel free to subscribe as more videos are on the way. You can also catch us live every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Naked Just follow the link below. Thanks again for watching. Farewell for now.